I'd like to welcome you all here for the 2024 Nationals Finals. Just our court officials coming on to court here. Commentary today, we have Nguyen Long sitting left of me and myself, Daniel McGee, uh, Bampton Island High Performance Director. We're looking forward to taking you through today's first final, which is the women's singles, and a very interesting matchup here between Sophia Noble and Shifa Flynn. Thank you very much, Dan, for the intro introduction. Um, both very young players, a uh, bright future for uh, the Irish uh, Bampton scene. Yeah, it's an exciting one, this one, and uh, if you look at their past, the final, um, a very interesting couple of matches. Both players were dominant uh, uh, on their route through to the, the final. Any of the matches stand out for you, uh, for the girls on their, on their way through? Oh, yeah, so I think both girls were really, really dominant on the way to, uh, to get here. Um, yeah, so Sophia, um, both the, of her game today, uh, yesterday, uh, she, be she beat Lucy Fox, and today she beat Kira Dwyer, who is number one seed, um, uh, both under 10. Uh, very, very impressive run. Uh, what do you think about uh, Shifa Rice? Yeah, Shifa had a really good route to the final as well. Um, a impressive uh, match against uh, Roshi McKenna. Uh, solid win there, 21-5, 21-12. And here's the stats. Uh, Shifa Flynn, age 16. Yeah. Currently sitting third on the ranking. Number one and uh, under 19, of course, still an under 19 player. And last year, she reached the final. Yes, and you know what? Last year's the final was this game as well. Shifra and Sophia. Now, at the age one, to Sophia, that's wrong. Um, Sophia is 20, 19, yeah, 20, yeah. Uh, both both players are uh, sub 20, um, very, very young players. Both have caps for Ireland as well. Um, for, for women's singles as well. Um, so very, very bright future uh, yeah. for the women's singles. Both of the girls making their first cap at the uh, European uh, Women's Team Championship this year, and yes. both of them winning matches uh, for Ireland on their first occasions playing for Ireland. So it really is uh, great to have a young squad coming through and a young squad of uh, young girls who, who are both achieving really a lot early in their careers. Um, we've seen, you know, Sophia win Irish under-19 Open, we've seen Shifra win 4-5 European under-17 circuits last year yeah. uh, events, so it, it's it's going to be a really interesting matchup. Yeah. Of course, Sophia a little bit older, maybe a little bit more experienced, already has that national title under her belt, so yeah. maybe not as much uh, pressure on her shoulders, where Shifra's really chasing that first title and Absolutely. you know to, to win a national title is such a such a big thing so I am very very impressed with Shifra um, she's 16 but her her style of play uh, she is so so good and um, with her with her wrist power her movement is really well uh, she moved really well across the, um, uh, the, the court uh, with the frame that she has that she moves so so well with it and um, that's really impressive um, as well Okay, Long, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Ooh, okay. Who, Do tell. Who are you going to call? <laughs> okay, so uh, commentary cannot be biased, uh, Dan. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, but looking at the history of the two players, the last this is the repeat of the final last year, yeah. where uh, Sophia beat uh, Shifra in two sets. I think it was 17 and Ladies 10. Ladies and gentlemen, um, on my right, Okay, the game is starting. So you're not going to answer that one, is what you're saying? <laughs> uh, I would slightly, slightly go uh, towards Sophia, um, just because she is a few years ahead in the development. But it should still be a very, very good game. We'll okay. see. Oh, 
I'm expecting a lot of that now from uh, some from Shifra. The, the wrist power that she generates. And look at how deep that that um, that smash is. How steep that was. Yeah, the angle there. And I know um, she's working a lot with uh, Yo Sing Zhou, who um, right. has uh, win the Irish Service Open mm -hmm. uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, Yo works a lot on that cross smash and the disguise that she created there is something I've seen him work with her on so excellent to see her use that and create that angle Two, one. a nice scream there from Sophia to set the scene very uh, very Carolina Marine like oh, oh. <laughs> going for the same Three. angle game but yeah. you could see that Sophia this time was anticipating the cross she was already starting to run that down but it will be interesting to see if she can manage to get the strokes of Shifra back, but um, yeah. she is excellent at running down shuttles, Sophia Noble. But that was pretty quick um, to adapt from Sophia as well. Bit of nerves, maybe, do you think? Bit of nerves, a few mistakes so far by Shifra. Yeah, uh, a few unforced errors uh, from her, but again, it's probably just settling into the, the play, and it's a national yeah. final, so there's always that extra bit of nerves at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, good punch, punch clear there by Sophia. Very good punch clear. Very motivated, very determined in these first opening points. Oh, very tight net spin there as well by Sophia. She's taking control of the game in the early stages here. Yeah, definitely. You can see her pushing up to the front of the court early on the net each time, and uh, she's really um, dominating that front of the court. And th that's going to be key because she doesn't want to be lifting too much to Shifra to yeah. give her those overheads to attack against her. So she wants to limit that because this is the danger. <laughs> like, that was just so good. That was really good by Shifra there. Yeah, and that's why Sophia has really trying to f make sure that she's early on the net to prevent that from happening. really starting to open up now. We're starting to see these longer rallies. Oh, I see Shifra is uh, slightly late to the net for a few times now. Do you, do you, is that what you're seeing as well, Dan? Yeah, I think uh, it's really down to Sophia's good energy and mm. forcing herself to be early on the tape each time, and, and that's setting up her the opportunity to make that kill. Very good. Good return. Excellent. It is going to be a battle of that front court because mm. if, if Shifa can try and win up there or uh, when Sophia plays the net first, if she's then pressing Sophia into the rear corner, she'll get more opportunity to attack. Mm. When Shifa's attacking, she's really dangerous. Yes. When she's the one chasing the shuttle, having to get down low, uh, because she's taller, it's, it's more difficult for her to get down into these long lunges uh, and, and recover again. So Sophia's going to really try and force that style on Shifa. Yeah, I agree. I think the net battle will be so important in this game. <laughs> Unlucky. Service over. Eight, three. Sophia has really started her transition into senior Bampton now. Um, we've seen her put in a really good performance at the Swedish Open this year, um, winning in her opening qualification match against her opponent from Switzerland, Rohanda, and then going on Nine, and playing a very three. close match, losing 21-16. Uh, Divak Shayak uh, from India, um, who went on all the way to the, the final of the event. So what you can really thing? see that uh, a, a, and win it uh, mm. against Leon Sihut. So she's really making big streaks forward against Ten, you know three. top uh, opposition on the senior circuit. Mm. Um, so it's always a tough transition from when you move from underage to senior, but it's fantastic to see how she's done that and managed that. That Let is really impressive. Um, steep smashes i really like the angle that shifa is creating at the moment Sh if she gets if she get the lifts if she gets um if she winning the the net battle and get the lifts of sophia i think that's the way she can win this yeah absolutely so here we are at the mid-game interval uh, and on the right you'll see shifra being coached by her sister Orla Flynn. 
uh, yes. Orla, of course. <laughs> she has her national title uh, under her belt, so she, uh, she had an impressive win in the in the women's doubles uh, t two years ago now. Yes. Uh, and you have Sophia there flying solo at the minute, uh, mm -hmm. no coach. <coughs> um, interesting, she's taken that approach, but you know she's got a lot of experience under her belt seconds. already, even at, at this young age. Yeah. So uh, she's v she looks very focused. So not too many changes to make for her as she's leading 11-4. Maybe Orla has some tips that can help Shifra switch things up. Yeah. But a uh, very impressive start from Sophia. Let's see if Shifra can get back into the game here. Very in the zone. You can see in her eyes, very in the zone. Play. Yeah, I think the Service line judge got that one right. Five. Slightly yeah. out on our stream here, but it was close. Mm. George, oh, again, it's all about, about Sophia's net so far. Yeah, early on the net, and she's actually getting a really good spin on the shuttle, and that's forcing Chiefa to give away the, the lift. Retrieval from Shifa. Oh. Sophia played that round the head smash really well, mm. but Shifa just wow. was managing to get that reach on it, and then Sophia had to work so far to get the shuttle back. So she is starting to get a little bit of a read on the play, Shifa here, uh, and that's going to be important uh, to try and neutralize the attack that Sophia's coming with at the minute. The way that Shifra turned her body there was really impressive. Really good core, very good core work. Lucky. Yeah, both of these girls Service doing over. a lot of their off-court work in the Sport Ireland Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a very good base where they're doing their strength and conditioning. Sophia Noble working along with Claire Brady and uh, Shifa Flynn working with Johnny Harris Wright, these guys put, have put a huge effort into the players and have supported them really well. Uh, and you can see now the physicality of the players from a much younger age. Mm. Uh, and that's so important uh, when you're playing, you know, 10, 15 tournaments per year that, that you've got these, you know, strong core. Yeah, and strength and conditioning. Yeah, yeah, that the body's not breaking down when, yeah. when you're on the road constantly. So. Yeah. It's great work that the, the Institute team have done with these guys. You did mention something um, that I remember now, uh, Dan. Very interesting. Uh, I think you were mentioning Shifra leading up to oh. this. Has she been training really, really well? Yeah, uh, there's just been a really good focus in her training. And, uh, you know, she ended the year winning the Portuguese Under-19 Open. Brilliant. Uh, winning five rounds in that. And, you know, she was, you know, two years playing up there because She's in her last year under 17, so mm. a really good Eight end to the year. Uh, and she's got like a number of exciting tournaments coming up Very good. Um, where she's got Dutch junior, Spanish junior. Mm. So she'll be playing a mixture of the under 19 events and some of the senior events like, like Sophia's doing. Yeah. But Sophia will be obviously now fully focused on the, on the senior events as yeah. she's transitioned out of the, the underage. Mm. Um, and she has to now make her way up the rankings. Uh, you know, it's a it's a long process. Uh, you have to play ten senior tournaments per year. You need to try and you know go into these events, get out of the qualification, uh, and then build your way into the main draws. And both these girls are now on that path. Uh, tell me, Dan, what do you think is the biggest um, problems or the biggest um, disadvantage that the junior player have when they transition into a senior badminton, even like the, with the top junior players? Because we are seeing a lot of. Um, the junior Bampton players we have in Ireland at the moment are like Matthew Chung, um, Sophia, uh, or soon to be Shifra, that we transition in this this um, this racket. So, yeah, I guess it's just uh, you know experience. Uh, the more tournaments these girls play, they'll get more and more experience, and uh, that that will that will stand to them. And once you start to get that winning feeling and start mm. to get through qualifications and that, that builds momentum. So I've I'm confident that both these girls have a great opportunity to push through and they're very much part of our podium potential program where we're, we're putting support services around these players to, to look at the future 2020, 
uh, four obviously we've got the guys that we have qualifying for Paris but we're also looking ahead to LA and Brisbane and, mm. and they're part of that program yeah very good oh great press again from yeah. Sophia early on the tape and uh, now ten. interestingly she's choosing not to spin because maybe she was starting to read that and already she's very in that with the flicks to the rear court mm. Sophia's moving um, Shifa very well very good that's a slice I say that's a slice Ten. very good slice from Sophia Look at where it lands as well. Service it's land before the service 11, line. Yeah, 18. that got the whole crowd clapping there. You could see that they really uh, enjoyed that and appreciated the, the, the technical side to that shot. Absolutely. Really good length from both of that lifts there. Oh, Again. Fantastic, fantastic. All over the net. Sophia yeah. just been all over that net. And of course, you know, Sophia's working along with the, the senior singles coach, Eskander Zilkernan, who has uh, been doing a lot of work, you know, trying to get Sophia up that speed to, to try and, you know, be the one forcing the speed within the rally. And he's done a great job. And you can see now when she plays the senior player, she's not afraid to, to be the one that's first on the tape, to be the mm. one bossing the, the rally as opposed to just following what her opponent's throwing at her. So it's a it's a good job that he's done with her. Uh, a lot more proactive. Yeah, absolutely, uh, yes. A lot more proactive. And and uh, Sophia is playing a fantastic tactical game at the moment. Uh, there's a few times she comes really really quick to the net, especially when it was um, I think one of the point was 1911 there. She she from make a, a really really good uh, drop, and Sophia came so so quick to the net and forced a mistake out of Shifra. See, this is what the good players do to you. They they force mistake out of you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, you know, Chief and I, at the end of the first set, looked a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, she started to, you know, get into the the rally, starting to read a little bit what Sophia was doing, being early on the tape, moved her base forward, mm -hmm. and then that little bit of maturity that Sophia has, you could see. Then she started to hold the net and flick instead. Mm -hmm. So she figured out quite quickly that Chief was adapting to what she did and was able to adjust again. Yes. So. You kind of called that at the start where you thought that Sophia might just have a little bit more experience than Shifra, and that might give her the edge. So it's looking that way uh, at the moment. But let's see if uh, Shifra can switch it up in the second and and maybe try and get Sophia out of that comfort zone. That's it. You never know with these games. Um, a good start in the second set, a little bit of nerve setting in, and then anything can change. Absolutely. And, and also the fact if you look at the way Sophia's playing, it's very aggressive. She's early on the tape. She's mm -hmm. pushing the pace. That can add up. Uh, and at some point in the game, she will need to, um, you know, let Shifa come at her, get her energy back Whoa. up so that she can maintain that throughout the whole game. Mm -hmm. So let's see if she can keep that speed and, and how Shifa reacts to it. Sophia is just so ready, though. She's so, so ready. Um, she's really in the zone. Very impressive. There again, early on the tape. Variation, cross net, flick. This is what Shifa needs. She needs to take that net back off her and then be the one attacking it with the overheads. Very oh. good, very good clear there as well. Forcing forcing uh, Sophia into a backhand. Yeah. All set up, of course, with her being the first on the tape this mm. time. I have to say what a great job that the, the events team have done with the setup here and uh, sitting to the right of me, the guy that doesn't get very much credit but puts a lot of work into this is Phil Mucone and uh, Philip uh, is doing loads of work behind the scenes in creating these streams and getting these excellent overlays and all these new additions each year. So well done to Phil for his work and uh, we're happy to bring you these good streams thanks to the, the tireless hours that he's putting in. Big up, Bill. And the team, of course, and the team. Sure, I have a few friends um, watching the games yesterday. And uh, one of them used to play rugby, uh, like, for Service his over. school or whatnot. Two. He is very big involved oh. in, uh, in sports and everything. And he said the, the 
Fox City is really impressive. Yeah. And that is big, big thanks to, uh, of course, Phil and the team. Yeah, excellent. Oh, again, Sophia, so early. A great dig oh. out from Shifra. Oh. <laughs> she really had to work to get that one back. I'm telling you, two. you never know with a good start. A bit of nerve set in for the for the senior uh, senior national women's women singles final. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and and that pace Sophia was bringing it has to has to dip, but yes, you know yes. she, she will get the energy back in the legs again, so and then she'll be able to enforce three, that speed again after four. that. Shifra has to give her nothing though. She has to give her nothing to get encouragement of. Rally there. Three. Both guards opening up the court with the clears, trying to make the cuts, trying to get each other working the four corners of the court. Ready to play. Oh. <laughs> That's the Service. little bit of different that she has is that angle and that deception on the overheads. Yeah. That's really, really dangerous. The steepness again, I have to keep mentioning it again and again. The steepness of the smashes that Shifra can generate, that is just so hard to defend against. Yeah, I was so impressed with her at the Irish Open uh, in, in the, the end of the year. She, she played absolutely uh, an amazing game. The three sets against the reigning English national champion, senior champion, uh, Nang, and she, she led, I think it was around 11-3 in the third, but didn't manage to close it out. But really highlights her potential, you know, when she's playing against someone of that level and pushing them that close. Um, so both these girls have, have performed well at, at senior level in, in international competition, and that's really what gets you excited uh, when you look at the ladies' singles program in Ireland that there's that depth of, of player as well as what you know uh, we have with Rachel who's in course to, to qualify for uh, Paris. A lot yes. of work to be done before mm. April, but uh, is positioned well. So yes, there, absolutely. there's a good piece of, of girls fighting for, for positions. That was a little good run there, a few points for, for Shifra, uh, with most of them coming from uh, that overhead smash to Sophia's uh, forehand side with really good steepness, a really good depth to it. There again. This is why she's got that run. She's been early on the tape, this time not making the, the stroke, but it's the intent. Yes. Being there early, taking the tape, being ready to, to get the lift. And then, you know, she has been extremely good with those deceptive overhead smashes. That's a really good smash there for Sophia, but really good defense as well by Shifra. patient here not afraid to play the long rallies oh. they just really try to make each other work now and that was a that was a really good cross there it's overhead cross by Sophia that was really interesting because you know traditionally Schiefer may have lacked a little bit of patience and mm. maybe tried to hit out of balance but there she was willing to exchange the clears with uh, Sophia mm. uh, and then she was looking to create that angle. Um, it's a bit of maturity a, yeah, in the game? Yeah, a bit more maturity but uh, again, you know, Sophia read that and then took the opportunity to hit down first so mm. she just spotted that a little bit earlier than, than Schiefer. So. But a much more even game this time. Yes. Oh, it's great. Service over. But it's been Seven. a good weekend for oh. the, the Noble household. Mm. Uh, Dylan making the semi final of yes. the men's singles. Uh, got an opportunity to play our Olympian that no win. But did a good job. Yeah. Did a really good job. And uh, he was very impressive on, on his way to the semi final. So 
It'll be a happy household this weekend. Uh, Sophia, of course, has her ladies' double final coming up later as well, where herself and Kate Frost will face off against uh, Paige and Rachel Woods. So that is another exciting game uh, coming ahead. She for a very unlucky losing out 22-20 in the third game of her mixed double semi-final. Yeah. So um, you know, a, a very uh, interesting day here so far at the nationals, and some some really fantastic finals to come as well. Still neck to neck in the second now. It all. A really, really Service nice spin over. there Nine. from yeah. Shifra. Eight. That time, Sophia early on the net, but Shifra was there right back challenging her. Before in the opening game, we've seen Shifra, what you had mentioned, be mm -hmm. being quite late on the, on the front court uh, throughout the game, and that cost her. Now she's at the front, she's able to challenge back with a spin, but she's also varying it with her, her lifts. Mm -hmm. So Ten, it's much more eight. even on the forecourt now. Shifra is turning up now. Very, very good. A um, few smashes there. Very good one down the line. 10 8 up. Wow, there's that cross smash again. I, I feel Sophia's getting a little read on Service that now. Mm. Uh, if, uh, if I was Ten. coaching Shifa at the back of the court, if I was Orla now, I would say yes, use that deceptive cross smash but also throw in some straight down the line straight clear straight reverse just to make her think you can still use your cross smash that you know that you enjoy using but you've got to have that variation so that Sophia can't just you know make that small guess or yeah uh, you know cover that one yeah yeah so, you know um Shifra actually lost two semis today both 2022 in the third Shifra yeah <laughs> How about that? Yeah, difficult. Yeah, yeah. 11, 10, Very, yeah, I'm lucky to not get into uh, more than just one final for Shifra. But, um, but yeah, 11, 10, where's she going? She loses the third set. <laughs> yeah, so 11, 10 here, Sophia has the lead. And Still very tight. Shifa has adjusted well. She's uh, she's changed her game plan. She's you know seen opportunities to to take the net back off Sophia. Um, she's been seconds. really dangerous with those overhead strokes. But I think the big difference is she's Hope willing to exchange the longer rallies. Mm. Uh, where you know in the opening game. Any of the longer rallies, Sophia win them all. And mm. uh, now it's more 50-50 on the longer rallies, and then yeah. she is still right. making some of those uh, quick winners. Uh, so any of the winners that Sophia makes, she, she's having to work quite hard for them. Yeah. But she is still able to make one, two quick winners. But for me, the difference is still on the the unforced errors. Mm, Sophia yes, hasn't yes. given away very many unforced errors in yeah. either game one 11, or game 10. two, where Shifra goes through a spell of giving one or two cheap points away yeah. and then producing one or two magical shots. Yeah. So um, still a bit wild um, I guess in her development. Yeah, absolutely. But Shifa is very much still in the game. Very much still in the game. Yeah, again, working the longer very rallies. Very quality shots there with both ladies. Uh, excellent lead by Sophia. Very good. 12, Sophia 10. just gets slightly the better in there. that rally. Excellent choice. You see, you could see that she had the opportunity to make the kill, yeah. but instead just choosing to take the pace out of the shuttle, and that makes Shifa's legs work hard trying to get down for that shot. Mm. So even if she doesn't get the winner there, and Shifa has to play one more shot, she still has control of the rally. So it's a, it's a great decision from Sophia. Good wild again. 
yeah. maybe a little bit of fatigue kicking in um, because we've seen a couple of unforced errors from from 10 all until now 13 10 to Sofia to be fair enough she front did play three semi-finals today and two of them went to three sets 22 20 as we were saying so yeah that that's up. understandable yeah. yeah the court time certainly adds up and Sofia has been relentless here. Yeah. She hasn't dipped the speed once. Um, <laughs> she's getting the change of shuttle. She had asked Sofia to change earlier, and uh, Sofia said no. She said no. So uh, <laughs> uh, maybe saying, uh, "Okay, I'm still the senior player here. I, I, yes, stu yes. I still get the one to make the decision." So absolutely. Fourteen, ten. Bit of mind game. You love that, don't you, Dan? Uh, it's uh, it's part of the game. Um, <laughs> it's part of the game. You have to be mature and able to deal with what your opponent uh, throws at you. So, uh, but these girls are, are both well able to uh, to compete on, on that front as well. 11, 14. Just really impressive power, very impressive hard hitting from Shifra there. Oh, what a recovery Whoa. from Sofia. Oh, brilliant rally. Absolutely brilliant rally. Um, Sofia, I thought, did a great job there of recovering the shuttle twice. Mm. She had opportunities to attack within that rally herself, but choose to clear again. Um, as if to say, come on, she fish you know, go come at me here yeah, and see what on. happens, you know? Bring it on. Oh. Oh. This is a shame over. it happens after 15, such a really good rally yeah, from and Schieffer. And that's too costly. When you're when you bring it back to twelve fourteen you're back within biting range to give away two 16, quick on forced errors like 12. that. Uh, against an opponent like Sophia who won't give away easy points, you know that that will cost her Potentially the match here. Very good quality shot there from Sophia as well. Both the net spin in the beginning that create that angle for the shot, and the and the cross net there, the cross um, drop there was really good as well. Very good quality shots. Yeah, working hard on her technical side of the game, and you can see the improvements that she's made. Oh, that was close. 18, 12. <coughs> ah, that time she for choosing to press the net. Yeah. Uh, going so on with Sophia's body. 13, um, 18. <coughs> and that's that's good. It's nice to see some variation there, her, her going after the body instead of just, you know, playing to the sides and playing the rallies. She needs to do something like this now. When you're 13-18 yeah. down, you've got to change up the tactics, try and find other ways to win points. She needs to put on a run now. Sophia, I love that slice, don't you? Okay. She needs to put on a run now, a few more points, 14, and 18. you never know. Yeah. We get to 16, 17, 18, you never know. Yeah, this is the point, you're 21, 11, you're 18, 14 up, and you're starting to think, okay, I'm a little bit closer to a national title here. Mm. And sometimes these cr thoughts can creep into your mind and you maybe lose focus. Uh, so she needs to stay focused now, Sophia, and Shifa has to try and get it close so, you know, that nerve starts to kick back in for Sophia. Ah, that's the shot that we saw from Sophia earlier. Yeah. But what a dig out. Oh, that's brilliant. What a rally, Elon. What a rally. 15, <laughs> Not surprised. What do you think about this? <laughs> Not surprised if you're going for the tile there. Uh, uh, showing her, showing her maturity. Yeah, <laughs> a long rally and yeah, you know, yeah. she can maybe sense, okay, Shifra's starting to get back in this. Some momentum going on for Shifra, yeah. you know? I, I Some I momentum going on for I her. need to break the rhythm a little bit, but, Absolutely. you know, a great rally there. Both girls still, uh, at this part of the game, pushing each other, fighting with for the longer rallies. And yeah. 
Uh, interesting now, 15-18, only three points of difference. Very important point here, don't you think, Dan? Very important thing here. Oh, I think Sophia heard you because she was much more aggressive for the return 19, that time. Yes. Just wanting to keep that four port margin and you know not letting uh, Shifa get back into the game. Oh, but again, Shifa early on the net. That time 16, again, racket 19. upright so she could play onto the body, she could play stop in front of Sophia, or she could play over her. That's what she needs to do. She needs to be aggressive like that early in the net. Sophia going really aggressive now yeah. with, the, with the attacks off serve. She wants to put this one to bed. Yes. Okay, there we are, that sets up four match points. Service over, 20. Match Sophia point. Noble looking to 16. add to her uh, national titles. Uh, this would be a second senior title for her. <laughs> she was not going to just give it to her. No, 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 no. One save there for Shifra. Such an impressive uh, season for Shifa last year with uh, multiple wins on, on the circuit. And, uh, you know, she's got a lot of uh, very good skills and talent. And, and you feel that, you know, she will be in this position again. Mm. But you have to give credit to Sophia today because she's just been excellent from start to finish. Relentless. You know, she's, she's been so solid the whole way through. And there again, there plum on the back line. There you go. Another national title. So. Well done to both players. Uh, a great final to get us started. Okay. Long. Absolutely, yes. Relentless okay. pace okay. from uh, Sophia. Sophia Noble, 11, yeah, 21, and Shifa just maybe looking a little bit tired after those semis earlier. A lot of play today for her, but I've no doubt that you know she'll be back in this position again. Yes. And big congratulations, Sophia Noble, uh, adding another senior title to her. Well deserved. Um, well deserved today, and and you know these girls have a lot of international tournaments coming up. Uh, and we look forward to following their progress um, and I'm sure this final will be repeated again. <laughs> <laughs> this won't be the last. Next final up will be the men's double, so we'll have a short break and then we'll return to you for the men's double final, which is Josh McGee and Paul Reynolds against Adam Callister and David Walsh. Uh, repeat of last year's final, uh, and it's an exciting one, so we'll link up with you when the guys return to court. So here we are for the men's doubles final, uh, a repeat of last year's final as well. Um, we have the rankings here uh, along the right hand side. Long has you know, pressurized me into saying if you take a look at number eight, uh, his name appears on the list. That's uh, entirely untrue, don't, don't, don't listen to that please. <laughs> but uh, Paul and Josh are, are current uh, players chasing Olympic qualification that are the top ranked uh, pair. David <coughs> Walsh in at four and Adam McAllister not within the top ten but we know of his uh, level and ability. Uh, 
yeah. uh, you know, he got his first Irish cap this year. Yes. So uh, exciting yes. for him to go away as part of the Irish team to the European Men's Team Championship. Mm. Uh, so this should be a cracking final. Uh, David Walsh put in a great display earlier in the mixed semi-final. Mm. Uh, Losing out, but in a close game against Josh and McGee and Moya Ryan, mm. uh, so he's he's in form and he, and he did a really good job in the in the men's singles as well. Long. Yes, yes. Uh, David again, another player who made three um, semi-finals today. Um, very very fit player, very fit player. Um, in the beginning of the year, um, David uh, took three titles in singles, doubles, and mix in Leinster Open and Connacht Open. Very, very impressive run from, from uh, David there. Yeah, I anyone who's making three finals of an event, uh, you know that they've put in the work and, and they've got the, the fitness base. Yeah. Um, we saw an, a, a really good uh, matchup between themselves and uh, Vincent Pontanosa and Matthew Chung. Yes. Um, so here's the stats. Uh, I'll just run through Josh and McGee, Paul Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, Josh, age 29, Paul 24, currently ranked number one, 64 on the world rankings and four titles together as a men's doubles pair. Uh, Josh has also won uh, men's doubles along with his brother Sam and mixed doubles with Moya in the past. So uh, a lot of experience on the court between uh, Paul and Josh. Um, mm. Of course, Paul is a European junior medalist. Uh, along with Nat Nguyen. That's uh, what I was thinking, yeah, Nat. So, yeah. so he's got quite a few medals in, it, in his bank. And of course, Josh took a European Games medal uh, in Baku. And here's the, the other pairing. Right, yes. So David Walsh is 29, um, uh, coming to his peak now. Uh, probably one of the best season he has so far. Uh, he actually also is a um, senior national champion as well. He won um, a few years ago with uh, Jonathan Dolan. Um, at the moment, uh, David Walsh is number four in the Irish ranking. Makasa um, is 12th, but I think that's just because he hasn't been really playing a lot of uh, the Open tournaments in the Ireland at the moment. Uh, there we go. So David Walsh win in 2019. Yes, 2019 with Jonathan Dolan. Yeah, so uh, it's Adam McAllister right here chasing his first national title yes. uh, and of course he's featured a few times in the in the men's singles uh, yeah. where, where he's had the pleasure of taking on uh, Nat Nguyen. Yeah, Nguyen, yeah. so again this should be a very interesting match um, and one that we'll look forward to here uh, so all the men in blue we've got the light blue team of Josh and McGee Paul Reynolds on the left and on mm. the right hand side uh, the men from the west uh, yes. Adam McAllister and David Walsh so this will be an exciting final. It's important to point out as well, I think um, Josh and Paul just came back a few days ago um, from Thailand in one of their um, uh, attempt to, uh, for Olympic qualification. So let's see how they fare today. Yeah, a lot of travel, a lot of uh, air miles going in. And yes. uh, next week on Wednesday, they're, they're back on the road again, off to uh, Azerbaijan okay. uh, for an international challenge event there. So. Uh, it's a tough year, uh, Olympic year, a lot of events, yeah. uh, a lot of uh, qualification events. Um, but they're currently sitting 19th on that list with only 16 going to the Olympics. But, right. you know, they're, they're one or two results away from, from qualifying. Uh, mm. But it's extremely hard to get in this year because everybody was within the competition. So yes, exciting yes. to see how they fare out. And we've got uh, Carol Farrell on the chair, uh, Derek uh, on the service judge. And this will be an exciting uh, encounter. Encounter, yeah. Very quick to the net there, uh, Paul. Just for those wondering de what Derek's job is, uh, so Derek Cray on the, the service uh, judge seat. You need to serve at a height no higher than 1.15 meters. And you see the little perspex uh, device he has in front of him. He has to line up both lines. Uh, and if the shuttle is above that line, mm -hmm. that is a fault. So yes. for any of you guys wondering what uh, Derek's doing at the side, that's his role. Very good from Adam, very good push there. Two love up, good start, good start for the national pair. Service over. 
the power that Josh McGee um, generate from so far backcourt is impressive. Very impressive play. Yeah, it works very hard again, uh, along with the Sport Island Institute team mm. uh, and, his, and his strength coach, Claire Brady, uh, on that. Uh, a lot of squat work, a lot of uh, um, pull ups, a lot of you know physical work to get those loads, uh, legs loaded. Mm. Uh, and then from that, he generates a lot of power and uh, he very much would be the backcourt player within the partnership. Yes. Uh, yes. Paul, very, very good at reading the game and controls mm. the front of the court very well. So there's a really good partnership between the two of them and the style you play. Very compatible. On the other side of the court, I would say Adam would traditionally be the more uh, front court player and David would be the one at the back of the court Service that would control the, the rear court. However, uh, David yeah. also is very good at the front of the court, reading the play yeah. and finding the gaps. So they, they can rotate quite well. Uh, as opposed to Josh and Paul, where Paul would be more comfortable getting in, taking on the front court, and Josh then would control the rear court. Very good push there. Yeah, and it's that put away power there that, uh, that Josh talking has. About, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you get that short lift, and it's always nice. Uh, to have a partner that yes. you play with that can do that. Five. I used to play with Sam McKay and uh, <laughs> Sam was always the guy that could put the shuttle on the floor and, and I think in your partnership with, yeah, with yeah. Hong, Hong Ting. I was Ting. thinking Hong Ting as well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big up Hong Ting, I, I know he's listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's important to have um, someone who can finish the points as well. Yeah, and especially, you know, in indoor arena, it doesn't play as quick as, you know, some of the, the halls, the domestic events are played in. Yeah. It's more like a um, international event where you're yeah. playing in the big arenas where there's drifts and air con comes into play. Um, you got to work so, so hard for, for in, in those kind of halls as well. Yeah, I, I, and like a lot of people would, wouldn't realize that, you know, it's the variation of the angle mm. where you're smashing counts a lot more than you know, trying to hit full power, especially when the shuttle's moving around with, with the with the air con and the, and the drift in the hall. Very good. We can see the pace of the finals. They always set the pace very, very fast from the beginning. Both pairs, they're up for it. Yeah, Adam and... Uh, Adam and uh, David, like, you know, taking a three point uh, lead and then uh, it's closed off quite quick. Mm. Yeah. Talking about Sam McKay, he will figure uh, he will feature a bit later on as well in the mixed final. Yeah, Sam, very talented player. Sam would have grown up uh, playing with uh, Paul Reynolds. Uh, oh! Both of them uh, were in an academy that that uh, I used to work with uh, in Whitehall Road. Mm. Uh, we used to do early morning trainings, uh, and both of these guys were involved in that uh, when I first moved uh, down to Dublin. And uh, Sam didn't pursue the full-time route, mm. uh, but certainly is a very talented player and uh, proved that today by, by reaching uh, another national final. He's one of those players that, uh, again, has featured in a number of finals, so is chasing his first national title. So. Uh, I know he'll be up for that uh, final later, and maybe he'll be hoping that Josh uh, is on court for a long time here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll be praying for three setters now. Very solid defense there by the uh, international pair. Oh, oh. Just kept it going, going, going. And if you can hear that, that is just a massive um, uh, uh, round of applause by everybody in the arena. Yeah, they were relentless in their attack. They're patient and hit and try to find different parts on their bodies. And then eventually, I think it was either off the right hip or the right shoulder mm -hmm. that uh, they got the winner. So uh, good variation from Adam and David. Um, oh, good variation by, by Adam there as well. Yeah, the rallies are starting to really open up now. Oh, yeah, Adam taking a fall but recovering. Oof, I think David was a bit, um, lost a bit of a focus there when Adam turned, I think he turned around to Adam a little bit. And that maybe that contributed into that defense where uh, I think Josh called, uh, take off the net then.
Service over. Seven, six. That was so good from Adam as well. Yeah, you could see the way yeah, he was setting up his serve. Like he held for that return, mm -hmm. set it up well in his crouch uh, attack. Played the first shot, followed up on the second, and was early on the tape each time. Uh, good so read, very yeah. good read, very good at anticipation. Yeah, I find that with uh, Adam, he he can really control the front court very well. Mm. Uh, once he gets into that run of serves where he gets you know two three points. Then he starts to get confident, then he starts to look for the shuttle, and he's brilliant in that crouch position. So, in the flat exchange, uh, Adam and Dave are, are very strong. But a good final so far, Long. Yes, absolutely. I think in defence, um, Josh and Paul have a slight advantage here uh, than, um, than Adam and David. Their, th their defense is just so, so good. And it's just, you know, always, always make them play an extra shot. Mm, that Paul again is now he's starting to read that front of the court. And uh, when Paul's hungry like that, and when he's finding the shuttle, he can really control the match. Uh, he's such a clever front court player. He finds gaps in the court uh, that, you know, similarly in the. To, to Josh uh, at the rear court. He can dominate from that area. Dominate front court player there, uh, Paul. Very dominant front court play, impressive. Yeah, so Adam has done a lot of uh, singles training in the last uh, number of years. Mm. Uh, David as well, a lot of singles training. Josh and Paul more doubles focused. They're working under uh, Sam McGee, uh, Josh's older brother uh, in the center. So. Mm. Uh, they're getting good guidance from, from guys winning a number of uh, European medals. So, uh, yeah. Bronze medalist in the um, European game? European games, uh, yeah. bronze medalist and uh, and European championships. Uh, so there's uh, three three European medals there and one in European games with Josh as well. So, um, you know, a lot of experience being shared with the boys. Uh, Adam working under uh, Iskander in, in the singles program. Uh, mm. and has gained a lot of knowledge of that, but he's a very versatile player. Uh, you know, I've seen him play good singles, good doubles, and good mixed doubles. Yeah. And David likewise. Yes, yes, uh, you know, both of these players. Yeah. Uh, I know um, David was recently away on the Leinster Intercounty trip. Yes. Uh, and he won matches in all three disciplines as well there. He's really talented uh, in each of the disciplines, and maybe that costs him the fact that he's playing three disciplines here. Yeah. It, it, it adds up, you know. Of course. Uh, it's always good when you put it in and you think, okay, I could do okay in this event or that event, and then you end up in the all three semi finals, mm. and, you know, the miles do add up, but it does. he's in good condition and uh, he's managed it very well so far. Yeah. Very tactically adapt. Uh, both of the players very tactically adapt. Uh, yes. And yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, very lucky to work with uh, both Joshua and David uh, Walsh uh, from when they were junior players, uh, and Paul as well. Mm. Um, but I used to do a training in, in Connacht, and uh, right. David was always uh, one of those uh, players that asked questions, and mm. I was always trying to figure out why you do something or, or how you find that gap or or what is the best way to uh, improve certain areas of the game so he's tactically very good and very cerebral player yes yeah. oh, that's a shame service over 12 11. Oh, variation cheeky. on the serve. Very cheeky, yes. David didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, that's it. Uh, five serve. Once it's under the 1.15, still fully legal to do that. Absolutely. And maybe a little bit easier to do than when uh, it was the old ruling on service, because on the old ruling, of course, you couldn't have the racket head above racket handle. Mm. But on the current ruling, you can now have the racket head over the handle when you strike it. 
providing the shuttle is below 1.15 meters. Mm -hmm. So um, that's very interesting. Oh, yeah. More angle that time. Mm -hmm. Took a little bit of the pace out, created the angle, and uh, I think it was Adam there was still being brave to step in. Yes. But because there was less pace on it, by the time he reached it, he was too uh, far below level net. So it's just that variation from the big power smash. Oh. Okay. That was close, but that was in. Yeah, it was a, a bad time to leave from Dave because they're 14 12 down. Uh, maybe not the time to be taking a chance on, on the 50 50 ones. Very good. Very good push there. A very, um, very active on the front court and pushing the, um, the international pairs back. Just a few mistakes now from, from David, David in the last yeah. uh, few hours. Maybe just a little bit of fatigue kicking in uh, on his end because, yeah. you know, in the semi final of the mix, we didn't see so many unforced errors from him. He, he was really solid, but just in this final, uh, a few more mistakes than what he would normally make. Good angle there, too, by Adam. Very good angle. On um, obviously a very big smash, but a good angle as well that make uh, the defense has to really reach for it. Yeah, generate a good power in that one as well. There, that's what Paul Reynolds does so well. He just changed the pace of the game with that block to the net. Oh, great coverage from Josh. Bringing back his singles days there. Mm. Fantastic movement there by Adam. This should have hit the ground. <laughs> should have hit the ground. Yeah. Josh still got it back, by yeah, the way. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was still hanging on to the hope that the shuttle hadn't bounced, but. Uh, yeah, but it did. Yeah, good call from Carol there. Yeah. Very good. I'm very impressed with the anticipation of Adam in this uh, first set of the final. Yeah, he's been he's been really solid throughout, and he's been really brave at making the, the forward movements onto the, the front of the court. Again, he's the one always pressing forward. Oh, unlucky! Oh. Uh, again, although making a mistake there, if he wants to win the match, he has to do that. Mm, he yes, has to course. make that move. He has to try and create something at the front of the court. He did the right thing uh, up until the last point. 17, 15, you're on. 17-15. 17 15. 17-15, two points in it, and it's evenly balanced going into the end of the opening game. Oh. Again, David just maybe a little bit tired. Um, maybe. You know, you see, he, he's not moving like he was in the, in the mix earlier, but I'm pretty sure that he'll get a second lease of life mm. uh, and get his energy up again. Just a shame that it's a bit costly. But look, it's 16 18, it's still all to play for. Yeah. So, let's see. There's been a fantastic uh, ex you know, exchange at the front of the court from Paul and Adam as well, both hustling, both looking to be the one that's creating uh, the opportunity for their partner. Mm. Uh, so, that battle is going to be very interesting going forward uh, in this game to see uh, who gains control of that area. Adam serving so well as well. There we go, this is the one I'm talking about, that net exchange between the boys. See, uh, Paul again, ready so and hustling. And, and it's just being that, uh, like, in the line of sight, there's nothing worse than when you're going to play net, seeing someone that's just, you know, hanging, looking yeah. for, that, for that kill. Uh, and that's what Paul did there. Adam was below level tape, suddenly Paul's up looking to hustle the front, and mm. Adam makes the mistake then. They're going to continue to have that little fight at the front. Uh, and then in the midcourt, David and Josh both have to be pressed up behind their partner so that there's no gaps. Again, David not ready uh, off the serve. 20, game point, 16. 
That's two points now that uh, Paul got with the quick serve. Yeah. Again, see Adam again oh. trying to hustle in there. A good return there from Josh. Um, clipped the tape and went over. So after the early lead from David and Adam, it was Josh and Paul who got uh, back into the game and closed it out 21-16. Um, uh, how would you summarize that one, Long? So um, I, I would say uh, they got a good start, um, David and Adam. Good start from them. Um, but Josh and Paul, I suppose, proved their um, class uh, at, 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 the, uh, at the important moments, at the important point. Paul with two uh, cheeky serve that give them uh, two quick points. And then it's, it's small margins, but you have to capitalize on the small margins. And then at the end, uh, 2016 and clip the tape in 2116. It's not, it's not like it's, it's not that far away. The 2116 sounds quite far with five points uh, deficit. It's, it's definitely not as far, but, um, but yes, more margins and then just add up, add up, add up and to 2116. But now the guys, um, David and Adam now has to uh, gather themselves and, and go for the fight again. They can't, um, the, 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 war, the last thing they can do is feel sorry for themselves and they, they have to keep fighting. They have to keep fighting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and I feel like throughout the game it was very evenly balanced. Um, uh, there was a brilliant fight at the front of the court from yes. Paul, Paul and Adam. I think a a Adam had been exceptional throughout the game there. Uh, I thought David started the game very well and maybe just a little bit dipped off uh, towards the end of the opening game, which is understandable because mm -hmm. the amount of uh, matches that he's played. Uh, it's going to be really important for David and Adam now to get a good start yeah. so that they can keep the pressure on Josh and Paul. Um, and be also interesting to see who wins that front court exchange again. David looks ready though. I like the way he tried to receive to serve there. Yeah. Both are moving up really high on court here. Yeah. I like that. I like that intense. That's the energy that they need. Uh, and, and that's what they did really well in, this, in the opening game. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, keeping that energy, uh, taking the front court away from Josh and Paul and, yeah. uh, and being you know, high pressed up the net, and Josh and Paul equally have that same challenge to to force them back, and uh, it will be an interesting opening few points here. Ooh, clever, very nice. Brilliant play there again, by Adam David. Again, like they at the beginning of the game of both games they have been very impressive they show the intent yeah that was all set up there with the, that little hold uh, push by hold Adam. and push yeah that was really nice finding the gap really well on court and uh yeah i'll be, I'll be on the end of it many times uh trust me <laughs> good spin too Very oh, fast, there we very are. fast move. Very fast read by Paul as well there. Yeah, both Adam and himself uh, are really hustling that front court and uh, David and Josh are both doing good jobs on the mid court and the rear court. Uh, and that's the thing, with Adam moving forward as much as he does, it does mean that David has to put in the energy just like that, mm -hmm. where instead of you know being beat by the flick, he's making sure that he's getting up behind it and he's working. Um, so he needs to keep that energy to complement the work that Adam's doing at the front. Very good there yeah. for Adam again. Yeah. And you see, like, Adam needs David to, to get up and work. Mm. Uh, and, you know, he'll continue to make that rush on to the front of the court. Uh, and if he can keep the energy, David, from the rear court, and Adam can keep doing what he's doing at the front, it could be a very, very interesting second game. That's a really good hold, just at the right time. Oh, good variation from Adam to go across there. That's unlucky. That's unlucky there. But the boys are moving very well. Adam and David moving very well. Um, they understand how they each other play. They were moving really well. Yeah, Adam's uh, taking chances and, and yeah. David's holding to cover him when he's making that move onto the front of the court.
Oh, that's first class by Paul Reynolds. His anticipation on the, on the net there was, was excellent. His racket up so so quick, and he's so ready for for the for the flat exchanges. That's basics that all the Bampton players should should, should do, you know, both especially um, front court players as well. Yeah, both uh, pairs here trying a few flicks, but all four players have been ready on that this time. Mm. Uh, so the energy levels has been really good to start the second game. Very good from Adam again. Oh. Very good from Adam. Yeah. He's been My excellent. God. He's yes. been excellent in that flat exchange in this match so far. Chasing it and, and lively across the front of the court. Very ready. Again, Adam. Just find the spot, find the gaps. 7-4. Seven, Seven, four. Four. They've got that three-point lead again. Mm. Uh, this time they'll look to maintain that try and get a lead going into the 11 point interval and then they can you know make their opponents think again like uh, it's just um, <coughs> good angle from Paul that time Yeah, it's short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, eight. But Josh and Paul now has to work hard as well. Yeah, I feel that um, if they want to switch the game around, just like that rally, Paul has to be in, taking the front of the court, taking the pace out of the shuttle more. Uh, when they're in the flat driving exchanges and Adam's in that crouch position and David's pressing up in the midcourt, that suits David and Adam like that, where they're playing them in yeah. the flat, fast exchanges. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of playing in there, sometimes maybe they look to go over them or sometimes look yeah. to play in front of them, uh, where if they try and drive through, David and Adam's done a really good job with that yeah. so far. They set a lot of traps, um, David and Adam, that make you play their game, they, that make you play that flat game with them, and they're just so ready for it. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to hit over them then. Yeah, and you see that's exactly what they did there. Mm. Uh, Josh chose to go over David. Yes. David was out of balance, and then Paul uh, did the counter attack. So yeah, it's a variation that they that they need to try and find. David, it's to you. It's to you. Yeah, it's to you. Fantastic there, yet again. What a hold from Adam, and he just saw Joshua making a move and then just hit the rear corner. It's a very Callum Thomas shot. Yeah, Callum <laughs> Thomas from Waterford, uh, excellent player with the deceptions as well. Uh, your partner for this event, Long? Yes, yes, he is, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't go as far as this now, but uh, it was a good experience, a uh, pleasure playing with him. Here we are, 11-6, and... Uh, Definitely a big uh, change in, in the tactics and the, and the style of the game. Uh, again, Adam dominating the, the front. David's got his energy levels back up. Yes. He's really working well across the rear court now, get, uh, getting the shuttle going down, putting in the extra smash for Adam when he needs to, covering him when he makes that chase to the net. Mm. Um, but Josh and Paul, a little bit deep on court. Yes. Uh, driving upwards, uh, getting bit caught passive. in that. Yeah, getting caught in that flat exchange as opposed to you know coming in and, and taking the tape off the guys. Intent there, um, straight away from uh, Josh and Paul, pushing really high up and hunting for that point there. Yeah, trying to get the bodies going, get them the brains uh, awake for the start of this. Okay. 
Oy. Again, Josh choosing that time to play angle and to stop the mi from the midcourt as opposed to playing the, the flat drive. Mm -hmm. A much better decision. Um, Surprise them a little bit. Surprise Adam and David a little bit. Yeah, just not playing into the flat exchange and, and taking some PSI, creating angle. A great flick from Paul. Oh, again, just taking the PSI out, putting it in front of Adam as opposed to trying to force it through him. Controversial call uh, by the ref. I think she's uh, she's trying to indicate that they both touch it at the same time, or uh, two racket touch. A uh, two-two racket both touch the shuttles. Uh, Paul does not agree, but the um, referee decisions is final. patience there yeah. from Josh. I think from uh, the mid-game interval, all of the smashes, his first smash you've seen has been angle. Mm. Uh, and it hasn't been, uh, you know, the big open smash. And only then when he gets a short lift, then he's, you know, using the power. And I think it's a much better play than uh, this. I would, yeah, again, see Paul now is trying to find the gaps as opposed yes. to, you know, power smashing. Good switch on the defense. Oh. Adam read that really well. Yeah, just a bit unlucky there. But the tactical change has brought them back to 11-12 now. Yeah, they win every point with the exception of the one point that that was, was controversially was called off. Yeah, that was that was called by uh, by Carroll on the umpire chair, um, and it's brought the game back really even. But definitely a different style of play now from the boys. And the defense that, is very see, good well. see from Paul as well. He's just mixing that shuttle up so much more. And Josh has been way more patient on his rear court. Uh, unlucky, but but that's the right idea. Yeah. Unlucky, but that's the right idea. Yeah. Commentary curse, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, but uh, yeah, Adam and Dave need to refocus now and try and get back into the style that they were doing. They need to take a step up in their base because if Josh and Paul are playing with less power, they need to be earlier on the shuttle, making sure that they're not giving away the lift anymore. But at the minute, it's like defense versus attack, with Josh and Paul controlling uh, the yeah, attack. Yeah. Now I think Adam needs to uh, push up a little bit and try to get into the net game because they're lifting too much. Yeah. And they, they're creating too many opportunities for Josh and Paul to just hammer them. And, and that's very much uh, been the difference that when they're lifting to the rear court, Josh is starting the opening shot. And even when they play to the mid court, uh, playing the shot below level tape and making sure that uh, the guys are lifting. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if David and Adam can readjust and, mm -hmm. and change that up. Oh, unlucky, unlucky. He has too much time, I think. Mm. Too much time. Try to do the right thing, though. Yes, yes, try to do the right thing. Patient from David, really nice there. Yeah, not swinging, just laying off. A bit more solid in their defense, you would say, here, definitely. So 14 13. Adam and Dave looking to, you know, keep that two point margin just so that they have a little breathing room. Service 
That's probably the first time I see Paul really, really dig one in. Yeah, it was um, it was extremely short the lift, and mm. Paul really opened up. And for the first time in the game, it's back to level score, 14 all. And the uh, game very evenly balanced at the minute. Very smart there from, from Adam as well. I like the way they varied the smashes across the bodies, but yes. kept, kept pressing forward. 15-14. Very high level Bampton displayed in the men's double final. Again, it's just Steve pressing up into the midcourt and Josh controlling with the the angle, and then Paul's able to hunt the net and kill it off for him. Um, we'll see if Adam and uh, Diva can lure them back into the flat exchange, like you said that they're so yeah. good at doing. You know, they set, set traps. Not us, yeah. But you see the patience of Josh in the first shot. That's the difference. So whether it's mid court or whether it's the rear court, him just being able to take that first shot, put it below tip, and then the boys have to try and create something. And that's not easy when you've got Paul then, you know, hanging across the front of the court. Oh, oh. there's that save. <laughs> Adam ready this time. Yes, Adam was ready. Oh, Paul's defense. Smart by Adam, yeah. very smart by Adam. Instead of hard hitting, he just create a motion of hard hitting. Yeah, he had to change it up there. Change the, the pace. was just getting everything back and then he opened up with the reverse and that really, really, uh, you know, caught the guys unaware yes. and gave them that chance to power it through. It breaks the posture of defend. It breaks the posture. So 16 uh, so all. Yes. to the light. <laughs> <laughs> I did that a few times yesterday anyway. Uh, you lost it in the light? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blinded by the light. Uh, yeah. But a loose uh, turn on defense, so. Yeah. We'll trust them on that one. <laughs> Good variation in a smash to go wide. Yeah. Extremely yeah. close match here. Did David want to change the shuttle there, did he? Uh, yeah, Dave decided to stick with the, the shuttle that they, they played the last rally with. Mm -hmm. Very, oh. very good defense. Well, wow. maybe it was the light after yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> That's solid. It's very solid. And and he holds his step as well. He moved in after the defense, anticipated uh, a flat there from David, I think. Yeah. And then he just turned it. Yeah, because at 17 all, uh, it's always a little bit tense, but he just was so solid and so brave to do that. And again, these big points, Paul's really stepping up here. Yeah. He's doing the moves now that we've seen Adam do, do earlier in the match. Oh, good shot by David. Oh, ah, that's a soft mistake. Yeah, oh wow, that, that's two mistakes in a row. Um, that sets up uh, three match points for, for Josh and Paul. One saved, 18-20. Oh, a lot of fans here. Um, yeah, David Walsh is David. Do, he's, <laughs> he's doing a lot of coaching and yeah. a lot of his young prodigies are here watching him. It's great to see. Very good to see, yes. Creating a really nice atmosphere around the arena. Oh, oh there it is. There it is, yeah. Really good, 
really good final. Well contested final between David Walsh and Adam McAllister and Joshua McGee and Paul Reynolds. Who I know will be going home for a well earned sleep after their, <laughs> their trip to Thailand. Um, but an excellent final. David and Adam did a great job, especially you know coming back from the first game uh, where, th where they were in contention to turn it around to get that lead again in the second game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe in their minds they'll be a little bit disappointed that they weren't able to, to maintain the lead in both games. You have to feel for Adam. Uh, he played a really good match still. Um, but it's another year where um, he couldn't fulfill his dream to be senior national champions. Yeah, he's had a lot of finals, Adam, and again, you know, he's still a very young man, yeah. uh, and he still has lots more opportunities. Uh, David has already got a national title under his belt, yeah. and I have no doubt that both David and Adam will be, will be back in uh, these finals again in the future, but uh, congratulations to Josh and Paul on uh, winning that final, and uh, we look forward to seeing Josh back on court later for the, the mixed doubles. Yes, yes. We look forward to uh, catching up for the men's singles final, uh, which will be mixed up with featuring two uh, national champions, uh, Nat Nguyen and Jonathan Dolan. So this will be an exciting game, and we'll catch up with you when the players are on court for the men's singles 2024 national final. We are back on commentary here, and uh, I'm glad to welcome our coach education officer, Craig McCourtney, joining me on uh, the commentary this time. Um, court officials on court here. Uh, we've got uh, Ruby Viter, uh, accompanied by Michael O'Mara, uh, officiating the game, and uh, we've got the men's singles final, an exciting lineup between uh, Irish Olympian Nat Nguyen and Jonathan Dolan. Yeah, hi Dan. Looking forward to this one now, I have to say. Um, interesting one here with these two. This is actually only the second time they've ever played against each other. Um, previous time being the 2021 final of the Nationals, where Nat won 21-14, 21-14. So, a lot to play for here, Dan. And obviously Nat going for the seventh national title. So, um, it's going to be an exciting game. Yeah, really interesting uh, matchup, and uh, both of these guys again have looked very solid on their on their way to the final. Um, I felt that in the semi-final that David Walsh put in a, a great effort against uh, 
uh, Johnny in the opening set, but Johnny closed it out the second quite well. And there's the current rankings as they sit. Nat Nguyen sitting well on top with 21,000 points. Um, Jonathan Dolan not feature on this because he hasn't played as many tournaments to date, uh, but we all know of his ability and, and what he can bring here. Yeah, dangerous player in the back of the course and well over six foot tall, getting great angle on the shuttle when he attacks from the back. Nat, of course, just coming back from uh, Thailand Masters, Dan. Yeah, um, hot on the quest for Olympic qualification points, uh, working hard and uh, doing a lot of air miles this year. Uh, but sitting 19th uh, out of 38 players that would qualify for the Olympics, so well placed given it's, uh, it's January and uh, it runs till uh, all the way to end of April. So 23 years of age, currently ranked number one, six national titles, as you said, chasing his number seven and currently ranked number 41 in the world. Yeah, um, obviously the Olympic qualifications wrapping up with the European Championships in April, so that'll be a, a really interesting tournament when, he, when we see him playing in that. Yeah, on the far side of the court uh, with Jonathan Dolan, uh, like David and uh, Josh, same era, 29 years of age. Uh, current Irish ranking 30, but we all know that uh, he would be probably the second ranked player to to Nat uh, currently. He has three sen uh, singles titles and two doubles titles. So quite a versatile player as well. Yeah, obviously his most recent title there. He had doubles with Sam McGee, her brother in 2014, David Walsh in the doubles 2019, and three singles titles previous to that. His earliest singles title would be in 2014. It was a long time ago, Danny. He, was, he would have been only 19 years old and winning his first singles title, national title, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, 10, ten years apart that, and uh, I know he's he's hungry to, to add another singles title, and uh, that's why he's you know chosen to play that as his only discipline. Although we do know that he, he's very good in, in doubles. Uh, Nat, of course, solely focused on singles. So both men, you know, fully fresh and ready to go for this final and. It's, it's a great variation in styles, this, this matchup. You've got Johnny, who, who's explosive, likes to create angles, uh, and you've got Nat, who's got such a strong recovery rate. Um, both these guys have worked under our lead singles coach, uh, Iskander, uh, and there's a lot of experience that uh, he has brought to both of these guys uh, in their games. So it'll be interesting to see how this match starts and then who can control. Jonathan Dolan. <laughs> Nat, can we end to serve? Sorry, forgive me. Love all. Fight. Good first rally there, Dan. Jonathan's coming out very aggressive, actually, on that first rally. But that's kind of his style, Dan, isn't it? Dangerous at the back of the court, creating angles, as you said. And Nat is a real rally rally builder, isn't he? And uh, loves yeah. to build, rally, and be patient. Yeah, like uh, you could see Johnny's eager to get the uh, point on the board quick. Uh, that long, fast rally like that, I think, will stand in Nat's favor. Um, you know, the longer the match goes on, if it becomes a marathon like that, Nat, Nat would be favourite. So Johnny will try and keep the Bampton uh, looking for quicker points, looking for chances in the round ahead where he'll create an angle. He'll look at the net, maybe jump some of the serves, uh, try and uh, let Nat, you know, not settle in and just like that, create that angle, find the line. Yeah, like that, that there is just kind of classic Jonathan there with the big angle, big smash, trying to hit the line and uh, trying to get those early points on the board. Johnny was quite active on the international scene in 2023, uh, playing a number of tournaments. Um, 
uh, game quarterfinal of the Portuguese Championship uh, early in 2023. Uh, some decent wins uh, then again at the Austrian Open. Um, and he, he's built quite a, a decent uh, season where he also went and represented Ireland for the European Men's Team Championship. So. Uh, this year not as much on the international scene because I know he's been he's been focused on uh, his studies and and his work experience and work placement that he's doing uh, and getting a good balance between that and his uh, his training uh, but still such a dangerous player once he hits form uh, so one that Nat definitely has to be fully focused for when he plays this game yeah I mean you mentioned he played he played a lot of international circuit in 2019 he obviously won the Cyprus International and Czech Open in the same year so um, dangerous player, a lot of experience as well. 29 years old now, Jonathan. So he's been around a long time playing singles. As you see there, fast onto the net there, Dan. Yeah, and maybe just not see that. Okay, I'm here to play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he could have yeah. chose a, a different corner, but he went for the body, making sure that shuttle didn't come back. Uh, and he has that speed as well. For a big guy, he moves very fast. Yeah, we could see his speed Travis coming over. forward there on the net. Five, just two. really good read. One. That looks uh, very confident so far. Just nice and relaxed. He's kind of almost letting Johnny come at him and then countering him when he he gets aggressive on the front court. Ah, oh, great move from John. That's the chances that he has to take if he if he has a chance to win this game. Yeah, he's, he's obviously two points there now. He's won by being aggressive mid court to the net, Dan. So um, he's going to take some chances, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And he has to take those chances. Um, he can't rely on trying to out rally Nat. Um, on the flip side. Nat can counter him like that, so he is quite good on the crouch and he's quite good at when people hit him on body of popping the shuttle back over their head and that makes it quite difficult for, for Johnny to, to take a advantage uh, of Nat in that situation. Um, but again, he has to vary it, sometimes go body, sometimes stop in front of him, maybe pop it over him, but still be aggressive like this at the front court. And that's exactly what I said, just to vary it. Well done. Yeah, as you mentioned, Dan is going to take a few risks isn't he yeah. and I mean he's he's come onto the net there and he held it nice he looked like it was going to be a flick and just held it off of the net nice shot there thank you so Michael Mara on the chair there a former national champion himself uh, officiating so it's great to see some of these guys staying in the game and getting back involved giving back uh, by umpiring and service judging uh, He'll be enjoying this one. Yeah, it's a matchup that, I, as I said earlier, we've only seen this matchup once before in the 2021 national finals. So, probably not that familiar with playing each other, Dan. Um, the odd time in training, maybe, but um, on the circuit and in the national level competitions, this is actually only the second time they've ever played. So, yeah, you know, they're kind of feeling each other out a little bit as well as they play this. Yeah, I'd say they're quite familiar from, from training with each other, but it is different, of course. When you go to play competition, uh, the adrenaline comes up, uh, Johnny's attacks are maybe got a little bit more venom on them, uh, so they're slightly different uh, for sure. Um, but they would have a good idea of the tactic that each of them would want to implement. Um, and if they get their style out, the player who does that more will be favourite. Nice turn by Johnny. Not really early on the net, making Johnny get down low. Service, service over six, seven. Good. Looks like that's been called out by the umpire. Line judge didn't see it. Yeah, to be fair, he was uh, obstructed by Johnny in that, in that uh, back line. It's very difficult for him to make that call, so umpire had a clear sight of it, so. 
Scotland's landed out. Well, it seems to be quite often that Nats attacking body on Jonathan Watts. Would we do that against a, a taller, bigger player often? Or Yeah, I guess, you know, Johnny's got such good re reach. And the one thing he has, for someone so tall, he's actually very flexible. So when he attacks him, maybe cross court, he'll reach it. Or if he attacks him straight, he's able to turn it quite well. So at least when he Nine attacks body, six. he's, you know, quite familiar of where the shuttle's going to come back. And it sets up that... Uh, second or third shot to kill it on the floor and he's patient enough to play the extra shots he needs to, to win the rally so uh, yeah it's a good tactic for him to use so far oh, nice flat exchange oh not going for the big straight smash there Probably the right shot, Dan, but just falling into the net. Yeah, definitely. There was a gap on the on the forehand side there. Uh, maybe he could have just yep. taken the pace out and went for a straight slice. Didn't need to be the full power smash. Um, but when the adrenaline's up and you get the short lifts, it's sometimes too tempting not to go for it. Yeah, and you, m you mentioned adrenaline, and I mean, these guys aren't used to playing as often in front of home crowds in their training venue as much as uh, as possible so you know there may be a bit of pressure as well having to play in front of the home crowd because Nat obviously only really plays the Irish Open and the Nationals in front of his home his home crowd yeah I saw his uh, his dad was uh, here earlier and I believe his nephew was there earlier supporting him so uh, maybe adds a little bit more uh, spice to the to the match, and uh, you know uh, it's always nice to play in front of your your family, uh, especially in home soil. And as you said, it doesn't happen very often, so uh, you have to enjoy it when it does happen. Yeah, it's great for the players to see these guys playing at home down in our in our national training centre here. So. Um, So, um, interval here, what are we thinking, Dan, 11, 7? Yeah, uh, I think Johnny's done a good job. I think he's done a good job of, you know, seconds. trying to create angles. He's, you know, being aggressive on the front of the court. Um, he's taken the chances that he's needed to do. Uh, Nat's been comfortable. Uh, once the rally's gone over five, six shots, uh, he's winning those longer rallies. Uh, and he just has to try and limit these quick winners from Johnny and then the match will go more in his favour. Um, but Johnny's doing a really good job at not letting Nat get settled and, and into a, his set rhythm. And we all know when Nat gets into his rhythm, he, he's a really dangerous player. Yeah, yeah, he's got a real mythology to his play, doesn't he? And he, he likes to keep his style when he plays the singles. And I feel... Um, Johnny's trying to disrupt that, and if he can, something, anything can happen then, you know. 13, seven. Yeah, and just a, a fantastic end to the season last year, of course, with Nat coming all the way through that uh, Irish Open draw uh, and uh, a really fun and exciting final against Alex Lanier, uh, who's a world seven. junior bronze medalist. Um, it was an exciting matchup and uh, a big, big win for Nat to have under his belt to finally have win the Irish Open at international challenge level. So he, he's coming off the back of uh, some good form. Um, the international travel to Asia is, is a tough start to the year, uh, but he's back on the European block of tournaments uh, with German Open coming up and Orleans Masters, where he reached semi-final last year. So he'll be hoping to try and repeat that form again. Mm. Uh, so this tournament will be the start of a, a longer training block for him uh, as he, he looks to, to build of course towards the ultimate goal this year of the European Championships followed by uh, hopefully Nine, Olympic Games. 14. Yeah, it's exciting as well um, to get to see him hopefully at the <laughs> Olympics this year in Paris. And uh, Rachel obviously not playing this weekend, Dan, but she's on a good course to qualify for Paris as well, right? Yeah, uh, Nat's at 19 out of 38, and Rachel currently sitting 28 out of 38. So, so both players uh, on course, uh, and uh, they have a little bit of work to do between now and April. But 
positioned well and it would be nice following on from Tokyo to try and double that from just not playing but to have two singles players in the competition and with the men's doubles close as well it's, it's exciting for, for that group of players to, to target that. Taking a good uh, stretch into the lead here down 15-9 um, after the break. Um, be interesting to see how it progresses now as the players get a bit more tired. As we see a mistake from that there, putting it out the side. No straight smash. Ten fifteen now. Yeah, Johnny just has to make sure he keeps it within biting range. Uh, again, if Nat gets, you know, five, six points ahead, generally then he can take chances and we all know the weapons that he has, these stop drops and angles that he can create. Uh, and if he's not nervous and if he's not um, close in points, he can play those with full deception. Uh, and when he does that, it's going to be difficult for Johnny to get that big frame down to to pick up these stop drops, to, to dig out the, re the close reverses to the net. So uh, Johnny has to try and make sure that he doesn't get any more points now. And keeps him a little bit tense. Nice little backhand there, Dan just clipped it down cross court into the space. Yeah, used Nat's uh, pace against him just to find that open space across court. Nat's really starting to get into his rhythm now. You can see he's happy to knock the shuttle around court and he's confident in his movement. Uh, Another a good attack there from Jonathan though. Cross smash. Yeah, a cheap point from that really. Um, he he actually read it quite well, um, but maybe tried to overwork Johnny to the front court. Oh, this is the one that oh, he's so good at. Oh my goodness, <laughs> he is so good at this one where he, he's in. He's maybe hung it a little bit too high, but he, his flexibility to be able to hold that position. Uh, and take it and guide it away from himself. That was nice. Yeah, we've seen that one so many times uh, and it is one of his unique talents. Oh, good variation from Johnny there. That's where we talked about earlier, where he's just so dangerous, isn't he? Straight smash right down the line again. Yeah. And then looking for the net, you could see him looking for the net after. And, so. a, and a little stare down at the front court after. Oh, yeah. And that's, uh, it's always good to see uh, when uh, you've got the favourite, the national champion, uh, the player trying to take that title, you know, saying, I'm here to win this um, and I'm going to make you work to win this. Uh, so. <coughs> That might motivate Nat as well, though. <laughs> well, that makes for an exciting game as well, doesn't it? And uh, you can see Johnny's really putting pressure after his attack, or trying to at least push in his base further up the court, Dan. Yeah. Really trying to make sure that Johnny doesn't get that net. Good variation from Johnny in defense that time, because he knows Nat's pressing forward. So he's yeah, trying to play over him. That's good. But once Nat gets to the net, and once he gets Johnny below tape level, then he's in control of the rally. Yeah, Johnny's really wants to try and keep himself in that kind of middle to high area when he's hitting his strokes down so he doesn't get below level net, as you mentioned. Yeah, good part. Yeah, we've seen that a few times, haven't we? Just that really fast up, big angles, straight smash down the line and Difficult to defend against that. Yeah, and Nat didn't get the height on the lift. If you're going to lift uh, to Johnny, uh, yeah, you have to really try and get it over him. You can't take the chance to play too flat because he's got that reach. Brilliant. Yeah, so lucky. Service over, 
He did so well that didn't he? People pressure in the right places and just uh, not, not, not just gets everything back, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> Johnny made a really good uh, angled uh, rear court shot. He was so early on the net, turned across, not still digged it out, and that's that can be soul destroying at times where you felt I've done everything right, and then he still gets it back. But not only that, you seen the lift was right between the trams. At yeah, the I mean he's he's got it back with quality as well, which you know. That's the difference, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, whereas um, another player, we might have seen a much shorter lift cross, and then Johnny wins the rally, but it's on the back line, the lift, after he was under so much pressure. It's, it's quite remarkable, really. Yeah, and if you've put that effort in to hit down, charge the net, be early, and then suddenly it's on the back line, you go, OK, let's start all over again. <laughs> that That's where you have to be mentally tough to do it and repeat it. You see there, Johnny putting pressure on the net again. Very nice. Definitely not giving him this first game for free, Dan, that's for sure. 15-19 now. Great spin. Again going body that time, Craig. That's landed in. So, 16-19. It was a nice spin. He got a really good lift off that spin as well, Dan, because as we know, Shuttle spinning, it's very difficult to get a good lift on a spinning shuttle from the net like that. And he's doing his job, he's keeping the game close, he's keeping it interesting, so he has to continue to, to build on that. That's landed in as well. That time, Nat took the chance on the body, and Johnny has been ready for it. Maybe he should start to vary a little bit more now, try and play in front of him, play over him, avoid going after his body if Johnny's starting to get the read on that. Yeah, and you could just see there, Johnny put pressure on the net. Dan tried, or Nat tried to take the net again, and just made the unforced error. Um, Seeing someone coming into the net like that can be quite intimidating, Dan, can it? Yeah, and we talked with uh, Long about that during the men's doubles. The, there was an exchange between uh, Adam and Paul where they were both fighting for the net, but when you have someone breathing over the tape, it's a lot harder to play it. But this, John, this spell from Johnny has been really, really good. Yeah, he's, he's come from 15 19 the down. Front court there, you know? Yeah, clever by that. He lost the last couple of exchanges on the net. So, <laughs> and yeah, that one and again. there you go. Do you see it there? He just needs to change the game here a little bit at the end. Um, Johnny put in a lot of pressure on the net here. Yeah, he wasn't scared so. to take the chance. But a clever that time to hold return of sire from that where he started him on the rear court as opposed to playing him front court. Oh, he went for it. Cheap one. Cheap one to give up the game point there, but he did a lot of hard work to get from 15-19 back there. Um, but all, you have to give him credit, Dan. He was 15-19 down, came back to 19 all. Yeah, um, he, you know. he's done a great job. Uh, he's he's kept the game to his style, uh, where it's been an exchange on the net, uh, not maybe uh, a little bit proud to give up that net. Um, he was wanting to match him there to show him, OK, you know, you're good there, but I can match you. Um, but then in the final point, when it, it came close, you seen that was smart enough to vary it on the rear court and then counter Johnny. The hard part for Johnny now is if he wants to win this, it has to be in three games. Uh, and that for me will be where Nat will be the big favourite from this point. If Johnny steals the first game, uh, and that starts to get tense, starts to get a bit of pressure on, on him, then it becomes a, a more interesting match. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Johnny's fitness holds up. Um, Tony Crowley out there coaching him, so these guys are training uh, a little bit together uh, in Baldoyle, so he'll have some uh, words of encouragement for him to, to keep him going and to keep him uh, motivated to, to try and take these chances and, and continue the way he's playing. Yeah, I mean, probably doesn't need to change a huge amount here, Dan. He's had he's had a pretty good first uh, game, and uh, he didn't do a lot wrong, really. He just um, had a few um, gambles, and you know they didn't come off for him. But um, you have to say that you know anything can happen here again in this set. 
Interestingly, there at the mid-game interval, you saw Johnny Dolan and shot, and Nat was ready to go uh, <laughs> straight game? away. And it didn't take much of an Come interval on. until he was back on court, so right. maybe a little bit disappointed on how he ended the, the opening game. But um, here we go. Let's see how this one starts. Very aggressive in that rally, Dan. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of everything there. Um, Johnny able to hold his own. Nat used clear as you smash his straight reverse. He, he did a good job, very, very in the play, but Johnny was able to run it down. Um, so maybe a little bit of confidence gained from the way he ended the opening game. Again, you see the variation now. Nat's going over him. Yeah, he's, he's, just try, he's not playing the net now, Dan, really, yeah. as much as he, because Johnny is pushing net, pushing net, looking to put his base up the court, and um, he's obviously changed that now, Nat, which is, um, you'd have to say, a, a good decision. <laughs> yeah, the fight's on now. The yeah. fight for the front court is on. Yeah. Um, that, that's a very proud player, and he knows probably that it's a better option for him to lift but i'm sure he wants to show that you know i can win that front court as well i, I don't have to lift to you to beat you so um be interesting to see how much he uses net and how much then he goes over the top of johnny good flat exchange here almost like a doubles drill <laughs> johnny coming out on top there it's hard to get it past a big man like that dan when you're playing flat yeah, like we talked about earlier, you know, Johnny's got very good double skills as well. Uh, and in the flat exchange, he's got good reach. He's got a strong forearm. And then if you do not measure it right when you go over the top, it's going to be on the floor. Yeah, not always going over the top now. Not playing full court anymore. Yeah, that's the one you're talking about, Dan. I mean, no net that whole rally. <laughs> so uh, definitely a different style of uh, men's singles we're seeing now. Yeah, and he, again, he was ready that time. He knew that at uh, some point Johnny was going to lose his patience, uh, attack, come in and try and win the rally. He, he wants to avoid these long rallies, but that's going to put him on that baseline now and make him work. It looks like it's landed in. Yeah, and it has. Good length on his lifts there as well. No, it's okay. Johnny looking to change shuttle maybe just to, to regain a bit of oxygen. Uh, Nat happy to keep going and keep him working. Yeah, nothing short now, Craig. Everything on the back line. Yeah. Uh. Five, two. Nice edge. Changing the shuttle now. So there you go. This kind of shows you the the big differences you have in Bampton in uh, heights and sizes, uh, and that's what makes it such an interesting sport. Uh, it's an advantage to be tall, but it's also an advantage to be small. Uh, Johnny uh, tying the lace, uh, maybe a small issue with the with a graze or or blistering, but. Uh, Referee has been called. I think Sheeran, one of our highly experienced referees, done. Okay. Medical timeout. Needing some spray, potentially. A little bit of cramp or. Yeah, it looks like that, Dan. I mean, uh, uh, looking like something just below his knee and his shin. So, um, getting some spray. Of course, you are allowed 
a short time out for this um, during the match, um, but not an overdue delay then. You okay? Yeah. Go for the magic sponge, see if it see if it works and helps the legs. Uh, hopefully nothing serious. Um, Five, let's see now how he, how he holds up as we continue. straight away forcing the pace now to, s to test the leg but uh, Johnny's over. still looking Three, like he's moving well five. so uh, hopefully nothing uh, nothing too serious Landed out. Service over. Six. Just feel that like there's a little bit of fatigue starting to kick in on Johnny's end because the one thing about playing the style that he plays, it's very fast, very explosive, but it does take a lot out of the body. So it's hard. It's hard to maintain that. It's what he needs to do to beat that, but for him to do that, it needs a lot of energy and it requires him to be always Service early on the tape, pressing, being aggressive. Is that a uh, straight attack there again? We see he's won quite a few rallies with that over the match. Really dangerous. Nice cross reverse. Slanted out. Service over. Seven, Trying everything, four. Dan, now. Um, it's no short rallies when you're playing against Nat, though. It's his style to really burn out the long rally, isn't it? Yeah, and you see there, Johnny produced really good quality in the round head with the reverse, and it's fallen, you know, right before the service line, but Nat's getting that back. Uh, so the risk of that is then Johnny has to cover that long, long distance of the court. So he's hoping that Nat's not going to get it and Nat's going to do his best to run all of these down so Johnny has to work so hard to, to win these rallies you see there's not as many quick fast points on Johnny's end now because the intensity four. and the uh, early net has come down and Nat's now starting to set up in a nice rhythm and keeping the rallies long it was obvious from the, the second game his tactic was to, to play over Johnny don't allow him have the front court uh, keep yeah. the rallies longer he's really trying to get him below level net as well he's um you know you can see the the pace has changed in jonathan from the first set now he's having to to rally really now and 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 keep in it mm, again you've seen just Dan putting him just putting him back up again yeah playing over and even uh he's not uh, forcing himself over, he's not forcing himself eight. to be early on the net he's just playing the high uh, hairpin drops hmm. so it's drawing Johnny in and then it's being back to the rear court and drawing him in and back to the rear court not not happy with that call but uh, had the line just called that in so um, point to Jonathan so 5-8 three points of difference Johnny still keeping this match interesting Really wants to try and keep it close here, down to 11, doesn't he, Jonathan? If it, if he's in with the, if a, sh a shout of taking this game, yeah. And you see, there's the risk. Johnny is now trying to make these uh, one-shot winners. And in the first game, he was able to follow that up, but in this game now, he's not able to to follow that up as early on net. Great turn from that and great follow yeah, up from Johnny. Yeah, as you mentioned, <laughs> yeah. tried to follow it up. Uh, he got a, got a nice um, follow up on that one. Yeah. Nearly went the wrong way. Adjusted well to get us as come across the court. Yeah, he saw his chance and he's going to take these chances all the time because, you know, he he doesn't want to get involved in these 20, 30 shot rallies. He, wa he wants to end it fast. And, uh, Nat's trying to make him always work the long distance. So you can see when he's attacking down, he's making turns on his defense. 
Uh, when Johnny's playing short, he's playing hairpin drops that brings him close to the net. Uh, when he's smashing straight, Nat's trying to play back over the top of him. So everything is to make Johnny play the extra shots throughout the rally. Again, trying yeah. to play it over him, Dan, as you mentioned. Not giving him it into the front court. Fault. Yeah, and uh, Service over. Ten, error then. Seven. Still keeping it close though, Dan. That's what he needs to do, really, isn't it? He's three points, but uh, to try and keep it close and give himself a shout. Yeah, I think Johnny is really looking forward to this interval. And I think after the 11 point interval, again, you'll see in a really explosive. Oops. Really nice cross smash there, as, you, as, as we were talking there. Um, keeping himself within two points of Nat. Yeah. 10 8. Johnny happy to take the break. That means then he can come out, you know, get his breath back, recharge, and keep the pace high like he's been doing. Yeah, and just get that push to 11 and take the full break then. Like on his earlier rounds all the way through to the final, <laughs> a wry smile there at his coach. Uh, you can tell that he's, uh, he's maybe feeling the pace, but you know, he hasn't wasted too much energy, to be fair, in his earlier rounds. You know, as opposed to an international tournament where if he's meeting Nat in the later rounds where he's had to work, uh, his way through qualifying or something like that. He, he has got more energy here to go at Nat and to play him. Yeah, I mean, his earlier rounds, he had scores of first round 21-4, 21-14, into the next round 6 and 10, and then 6 and 8, 17 and 8. So all two set matches all the way through for Jonathan and single figures mostly in all his games. So um, it's hard to change your to change your pace and then for this kind of match Dan when you've had single figure games the whole tournament up to this point nearly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh David, David Walsh did a, a good job in the opening game against him today, but Jonathan looked excellent in that in that second Thank game uh, against David. Uh me like likewise on that look he's not even taken his uh, break. He once again he's on court ready to go. Yeah, uh, Johnny will take that full 90 seconds. Uh, okay, you. You know, he'll regroup, and then again he'll come out explosive, and he'll come out and, f uh, and fight for the the first uh, couple of points. Try and get Nat under pressure, uh, and then keep that pressure on him to try and close out the game. Yeah, of course we mentioned um, some of the earlier rounds as well, and Nat obviously um, played uh, one of our upcoming juniors, Dylan Noble, in the in the previous round as well, and. Um, um, these guys are probably enjoying playing that down as well. Um, it's uh, great to be able to play the Irish number one uh, in a home tournament. And nice for him to be playing at home against these guys. Yeah, that's good by Nat there on the net. Yeah, play the really Just getting Johnny below the level of the net there, Dan, to, to force the, the yeah. uh, shuttle to come up with the tape. Yeah, play the net and, and stay this ground. Uh, Johnny's going to take that chance to play back on the net because, you know, he, he wants to try and create a, a difficult position for Nat, but Nat was reading the game really well there. <sighs> that time, Johnny yeah, coming out on top. It's a, brilliant, it's a brilliant shot of the net from Johnny there, catching the tape, catching the tape as it came over. Yeah, and he's really good uh, for, for a player of his stature. Uh, and his size, uh, he's got Service very good hands, very good feeling on the, on the front court. Um, I remember at junior level being away at the World Junior Championships with him and uh, in the tournament in Japan, he was you know, unbelievable at taking the net and then opening up with big attacks uh, against top, top opposition. Uh, so he, he has that versatility in his game uh, where he can play net, he can he can defend, he can get down for a big guy. Um, it's just maybe the variations and attacks that he needs to do better. Uh, not always using the big power smashes, uh, using his angles and you know being patient when he's at the front of the court. Uh, and then using his big power smashes and his chases to the net uh, as a variation as opposed to every time.
Nice there from Jonathan. Yeah, really short left from that. Uh, yeah. And just, I mean, he, he's such a tall player. You, you, can, you know, you really need your good length. And over his head, Dan Orris has been intercepted pretty much every time. Short again. <laughs> nice follow up from that there. Yeah. Didn't want to push it hard onto his body, so just took the pace off with his better option there. The hard part about that, and you ask every club player, when you have that shuttle hanging above the net, is you want to go for that big finish. So uh, good composure from that, not to, not to force it. Called out. 11. Nearly in a similar situation, four points behind um, this game. So let's see if Jonathan can, can do anything here. Nice flat exchange and gone over Jonathan's 16. head there. Really, you could see him pressing up the court there, Dan, but yeah. <laughs> um, Matt was able to get it over his head. He gave us a right smile there uh, to the commentary box. Uh, maybe he, he knew that he, he was taking a chance on that one, but uh, yeah, he, he needs to dig deep now. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's a brilliant shot, really, isn't it, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> Just hitting the line, incredible. And, uh, and uh, again, that is more the type of smashes that he needs to use, not the full power smash, the angled ones where, you know, he can also follow that up if he needs to. Oh, good variation from that, opening up the court. Just drifted out Service there, over. but really good rally 17, there. 12. Johnny has to dig deep now. Yeah, no, stay on court. Johnny, you can't do that either. Stay yeah, on he's court, trying to, stay he's on trying court. to regroup. Uh, yeah, he's trying to regroup and uh, catch his court. breath, maybe done. Yeah. Umpire saying no, continue to play. There we go again. Beautiful angle. Good angle. Looked like a short lift from that there as well, to be honest with you. Yeah, the nice part about that is just the short action that he uses where he doesn't show that what he's going to do until the very last second. Uh, and he matches that with the angle that he produces. And that just hitting that baseline all the time. Service over. Yeah, I mean, we just see that net there, Dan. It just looked like Jonathan run out, run out of steam to get in for that. He, he, he didn't even move for it, so even tired, tiredness is kicking in, I think. Yeah, it's that fatigue now towards the end of the game. Uh, he's run out, of, uh, run out of time and run out of energy, so... That's just playing the baseline all the time now. Yeah, it's just and what we were seeing before where Johnny was getting behind it and you know, hitting with angle, hitting with power. Now he's dragging the shuttle or he's just clearing back. So of course last year's men's singles final was um Nat against Adam McAllister who we saw earlier in the in the men's doubles final. Um Nat now as I say that, serves into the net. Nat now looking for his seventh national title as we have um, match point. Yeah, six match points. Uh, he has a good opportunity to put the seventh one on the list. Keeping in there. Yeah. Great speed onto the net. Uh, Nat again trying to lure him into that one onto the body to play over the top, but uh, Johnny just a little bit too quick for him that time. Uh, 
Oh, what a shot. He's <laughs> <laughs> been caught yeah. out. Yeah. That was a great one where he goes back over the top of uh, Johnny, but Johnny was unable to read it. Uh, and, and luckily, it landed just out, so Johnny's still there. This is two, two match points saved, then. Yeah. And a good uh, flick cut, Nat. Oh, no. Ah, it's been just called out. Great effort from Johnny yeah, there. Yeah, really good. And uh, a seventh title for Nat to win. Uh, following on from his Irish Open win in uh, November, back in for another win at his Irish Nationals. So uh, a very exciting final that. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 exactly what I wanted to see. You know, taking gambles, taking risks. Jonathan did all that, Dan, and just ran out of steam at the end. But it has to be said, it was an exciting match, and um, the crowd that are here in the National Indoor really, really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of our younger players here coming down to see it, which is fantastic. Yeah, and uh, a very exciting uh, final to follow that. Uh, we've got uh, Sophia Noble returning uh, onto court to try and double her national titles uh, in the doubles with, with Kate Frost, uh, another former national champion here. Uh, and she's playing against uh, Paige Woods and Rachel Woods, who are both chasing their, their first senior national title. So uh, we look forward to that game and uh, We'll catch up with you soon when the players uh, return to court. So we're back here for the ladies doubles final, the Irish Senior Nationals. Joined back again beside me is Longwin. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to see you, my friend. As we put the rankings up there, we'll see we see Kate Moya up at the top of the rank Irish rankings at the moment. Followed by Paige, who's there. Uh, Paige obviously today playing with her sister, Rachel Woods. Yes. So, um, as far as I can see, uh, I, I think I've seen um, Rachel um, a good few years ago, but this is the first year um, in the uh, Badminton Ireland um, calendar anyway that um, Rebecca, uh, Rachel, Rachel Woods? Rachel, yeah. Rachel is back um, to, the, to the ranks. I think the last time she was back is four years ago when she played um, in the 22, uh, 2020 season. Uh, so, yeah, good to see you back. Exciting finals ahead of us here with the Woods sister and Kate Frost and Sophia Noble. Um, Kate Frost and Sophia is a pretty relatively new partnership. Um, <laughs> cheers. Uh, yeah, so Kate Frost and Sophia Noble are a pretty new partnership here. So Kate is 
So Kate is 25, uh, Sophia is 19. That, that's wrong there. Uh, that should say Sophia Noble. Uh, but yes, uh, Kate is number one ranked in the Irish Senior Ranking. And Sophia is eighth. Um, and Kate Frost has won two women's doubles national titles. Uh, and Sophia, as we were just uh, talking about her earlier, she won the uh, women's singles uh, in two sets straight against Shifa Flynn. Yeah, exciting pair. Um, they had a bronze medal this year from the Bulgarian International Championships uh, mm. uh, in a relatively new partnership and have, have done well very uh, in international competitions. Kate very experienced and of course uh, featured in the, the mixed doubles earlier in a, in a cracking semi-final. Mm. Uh, over to the Woods sisters, uh, Rachel Woods, 22, playing with her younger sister Paige Woods, uh, who's uh, only 17 years old. Mm. Uh, Paige is currently number three in the ranking, and uh, she was in the final of the nationals last year. Yes, uh, with uh, Michelle Shukin in, in the women's doubles. Right. Um, interestingly, uh, Rachel, we would have known uh, who's won multiple uh, underage national titles with her twin sister Rebecca, mm -hmm. uh, is now studying in England and is back for this event, uh, competing with her younger sister or Paige this time. Um, but a really exciting partnership, um, and I've no doubt that you'll see uh, their father, Trevor, behind uh, the court uh, coaching. And uh, Trevor was a European junior medalist uh, in mm. mixed doubles, so a lot of experience there in the family. Um, yes, I, I've had uh, the opportunity to play against uh, Trevor growing up, and. Uh, his wife Alison, uh, and I know Alison will be tuned in uh, watching Alison also was a very good uh, player. Uh, so a real family of Bampton players and uh, a really exciting match up here between the Wood sisters and Kate and uh, Sophia. Exciting final ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kate Frost and Sophia Noble. And on my left, Paige Woods and Rachel Woods. <laughs> Sophia Noble to serve. To Paige Woods. Above all, play. And officiating the match, we have Derek Cray on the umpire chair, and we've got Carmel Griffin on the service judge chair. So they'll be officiating the match for us here, and we're underway, and it's a one love lead for Sophia and Kate. Rachel's really aggressive on early points there, um, trying to get, uh, trying to give Sophia and Kate problems. Mm, uncharacteristic mistake there from Sophia uh, off serve, and it's Rachel on serve now for, for the Wood Sisters. That was a call in, very good interception there. Yeah, really. very interesting um, semi-final as well um, earlier in the day uh, with the Woods beating um, Moya and Shifra. Very good again by Rachel. Three, yeah, Rachel two. did that brilliant in that uh, semi-final that you mentioned. Uh, she cut out uh, a lot of the third shots on return of serve. Mm. Um, it took a while for Moya and Shifra to figure out that they needed to go over her and you know play into the long corners. Yeah. Uh, and once they did, then it became a very open match. But uh, the Woods played really well in the closing points, just to, just to see it out, 22-20. Um, and this again looks like it's going to be a cracking match, it's three all, uh, mm. and a very even game. But Rachel starting very well, looking very aggressive at the front of the court. Absolutely. And I would say in that partnership by the Woods there, Paige would be a lot uh, more comfortable in a front court, um, even though. Uh, even though Rachel will be a really good front court player as well. Um, both of them has really good interceptions. Five, yeah, yeah, Paige three. is a fantastic mixed player and you've yeah. seen her at underage level along with Della Noble mixed. She's very comfortable up there at the front of the court. Uh, and we were talking earlier, uh, you weren't as familiar Four, with Rachel uh, since she's been away, <laughs> but has that lovely fluent overhead technique uh, and generates a lot of power. Um, mm. So she, 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 they, they complement each other very well uh, with Paige controlling the front court and Rachel doing that uh, work from the rear court. 
one thing I do realize from these uh, two girls, especially Sophia and Rachel, that their uh, returning positions, the starting returning positions, are really high. Uh, 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 especially uh, Sophia. Sophia almost tipped the line, um, where uh, Rachel was very high in, in return as well. Yeah, you see it here now. They're nice and the aggressive. Very aggressive uh, returning position there. Very aggressive. Out, and yeah. maybe intimidating her to do the flick mm. uh, and get the point. It'll be interesting to see if the girls get quality flicks in, how she can cover that. Yeah. It's always pace, by the way. Look at that. Very aggressive position stra uh, straight off the bat. You'd be suggesting more flicks long if you were in the coaching seat right now or yeah maybe maybe give give them one or two see how they react to them um if it's working then just nine, stay that way six. but at the moment it's nine six for kate and sophia um yeah again she can see herself very very adapt tactically kate Good defense there for Sophia. Ten, six. Yeah, crouch defense. Yeah. Uh, Very good turn there by Paige. Just a few. Uh, and stairs, yeah, yeah. From, from Sophia so far, but um, oh yes, yes, I think there's a good drift in the arena as well from from left Eight, to right. Ten. So that probably doesn't help when uh, you have to lift on that side as well. Yeah, and you, you would see that during the Irish Open, uh, and yeah, like you see know that's the drift there. Yeah, Service and you know from over. training on a on Eleven a Thursday when, yeah. <laughs> when it, the coach are positioned the other way, mm -hmm. uh, playing towards the wall is. Is always uh, fast. A bit and faster. Yeah. The other side is, is slow, mm. uh, and here it's more of a sideways drift across the court. Yeah. But you know the players will be used to that, and they'll, they'll have adjusted from that through the earlier rounds. Mm. Um, it's just maybe when the intensity goes up and you, you lose that concentration for a second, you forget that, and then you just overcook it a little bit. Mm. But uh, an evenly balanced game here, 11-8, uh, definitely in the opening in points, uh, Rachel dominating the front court, mm. uh, Kate and Sophia seconds. adjusted well, started to play higher seconds. into the, the rear corners and the uh, game's really opened up now, so. You can see Sophia is a little bit less, a, a little bit more relaxed 11, now after winning her, her title win singles, uh, a bit more relaxed. Um, but still, obviously, wow, wow. <laughs> good smash. <laughs> but still, obviously, very, very um, intense uh, in her in her tempo. Yeah, hungry to add to those national titles that she already has. Absolutely, and if it's uh, if she wins this game, it will be her first women's doubles um, title. 13. Yeah, it will be her first ladies doubles. So yeah, not a bad day's work if you're you're coming home uh, with two titles. But you know, this is still a long way to go. And yeah. It's, it's going to be an interesting matchup if the Woods can, you know, keep it close. Um, but if Kate 14, and Sophia eight. get a lead, they are a very solid partnership, and mm. and they definitely would be a little bit more physical than uh, than Rachel and Paige. But uh, it's it's quite even so far. Good read there from Kate. Good front court push. 15, eight. I thought Kate looked very good in the semi-final of the mixed earlier as well. Mm. Uh, made very few errors, um, served well, returned well. Uh, and she seems to have started this game very well again. 16, 8. Yeah, the Woods need to get into their rhythm. Service over. Nine, six. The idea was right. It's a good. It's a good switch. The idea was right. Yeah. Hey. Service over. Seventeen, 
nine. Sophia and Kate is dominating in the first set of the women's doubles final. A lot of flicks so far that I can see. A lot of flicks to put the woods back. Uh, the woods back. Sophia backcourt is just really good. Very powerful. Very dominating. Yeah, and they work really well in that position. Kate's happy to go forward and she intercepts and cuts out very well. Uh, Sophia's got that great work rate at the back of the court and, and can really control from, from that area. So the game complements each other extremely well. So 19-9, uh, uh, quite a big lead now, and uh, Sophia and Kate really pressing hard uh, in this match. Oh, good defense. Out. And a well left as well. 20, game so point, nine. Double figure uh, match points here for Kate and Sophia. Yeah, you Only needed oh. the one, 21-9. Yeah. Dominating, first dominating first Noble game there. Yeah, they looked very solid the, the whole way throughout um, that game. The Woods started the game well, but I think Kate and Sophia figured out their tactics quite quick. Yeah, uh, started to play high into the long corners, um, maybe try and get Paige to the rear of the court more often. Uh, yeah. And then in their counter attack, uh, they were very dominant. So it was been an interesting matchup so far, but definitely. Um, Trevor has to try and switch up the tactics a little bit. Yeah. Uh, try and get Rachel, you know, back into the winning the first three shots. Get Paige transitioning quicker onto the front of the court so Rachel can work from the rear court. Uh, but but you know Trevor's a good coach and he's he's tactically very good. So yeah. So he will give them some good information there uh, to work off. Uh, with Sophie and Kate, they just got to keep doing what they're doing. Exactly. Keep, keep exactly. the keep the play open. Uh, in the longer <coughs> rallies where, where it's a physical battle, they're the pair that's coming out on top. Yeah. Both Kate and Sophia hit so hard as well. Um, and it's, 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 I think it's quite important now to for the Woods to play a little bit more, um, just try to avoid having big lifts, because the, the, the more they are under attack, the less likely they're going to come out with a point. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, it will be interesting to see as the first few points unfold how they react. Um, you know, they did a really good job at the opening few points at, at you know, finding the third shot. Yeah. Uh, not allowing Kate and Sophia to get into rallies. But once they Love opened all. it up, you know, it went uh, completely in favour of, of Kate and Sophia. But uh, here we go. Second set. Uh, great angle. That's a really good Take shot there over. from Rachel. I love the way that she she just she just touched it over with pace. Really nice technique as shown there. Good defense, good good dig there. That's the fire we were talking about. Rachel yes. is in the rear court. She is strong. And I feel like it would be more in favor of the woods if Paige would be more in the front. Shot, but didn't pay off. Service over. Yeah, again, you see that One, time Sophia two. challenging Rachel at the front and then yep. uh, keeping Paige to the rear of the court. Um, it'd be interesting to see how many intercepts Rachel can get again mm. at the, uh, off the serve in the third shot. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, can okay. Paige make that move forward and, and get control of the net. Kate also is a very good net court player, so. You know, that's what's going to cause her trouble in, in winning that area or just committing to that, you know. Very smart from Sophia Two. as well. Oh. Good interception of a body attack. Miscommunication there by the Woods. Yeah. Three, yeah. two. I think they are trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paige is taking chances, but 
Kate and Sophia are just too aware of, of, of that and you know they're working the backcourt all the time. You can see now as well, like the flicks there. You, you had mentioned that you felt that Paige has quite a high Four, base two. Uh, yeah. on the trim server, and they're doing that. They're flicking her, they're putting her on the back line straight away. A lot of flicks by the. Uh, again, yeah. another flick. A lot of flicks I can see from um, from Kate and Sophia, Five, uh, especially in two. the first set when they were leading. I think she'll stick with that tactic. Okay, yeah. If and it's then working, then fix it. Look, and then uh, straight away block Six, counter. Yeah. Two. Um, but the, uh, the girls need to stand back a little bit now. Yeah. I, I, I say they have to stand back a little bit. There you go. Yeah. You can see that now. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. That's just better. Look, you got to get into the rally. Yeah. And that's Service exactly over. what they just did there. Three, I think we just heard you there. Uh, <laughs> maybe she was within earshot because Fair that, enough. <laughs> that, was, that was exactly the right thing that she did. She took yeah. the step back and then got themselves in the rally. Yes. Because in the rally, they've done, they've done okay. Yeah. They just, they just lose Four, quite quick six. in the first few shots and they have to adapt to it. I think, Ray, uh, I think uh, Trevor was sitting in the back there probably oh. was feeding them information, but it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I think we'll give uh, Trevor credit for that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're better in this position, but, uh, yeah. but because Sophia and Kate's defense is quite solid, Again, you know, Rachel is going to have to do a lot of work here. Yeah, Rachel Five, has to work really hard. Six. But then again, there you go, you can see it. You can see it's working a lot better for them. Yeah. A very good punch clear by Rachel at the right time as well. Put Sophia in a bit of a bit of a hard situation. And she had really had to reach for the shuttle there. And she missed. Yeah, and Paige is uh, really solid on that serve and first shot situation. But you know, the, the issue Service we have over. here is seven the this game goes five. on and if Rachel has to you know cover like seventy percent yeah. at the rear court, uh, those long rallies will add up. Absolutely. Uh, that was a great return of serve from Paige. Service that time over. she was really ready, got up Six, for it seven. and got a good angle, set up her sister well and Rachel's yeah. really good at the front court as well. Go. Good yes. shot there from Paige. The Woods is coming back. Seven. Seven all. all. You never know. Rachel's also good at the front court area. I, I, I remember, you know, uh, when Rebecca and herself used to play. Uh, Rebecca Service would have been maybe more than Eight. one working at the back court, Seven. which allowed Rachel to actually play front court and, and make those intercepts as well. Yes. Uh, I think uh, when they were younger, it was interesting. I think uh, Rachel may have done uh, some gymnastics, and Rebecca was a very good swimmer. Oh. So, uh, yeah, they were very, uh, very physical and uh, always very well conditioned uh, when they were playing. Oh, very uh, smart there for Kate. Again, it's, 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 you know, when they have Nine, Kate in the back seven. she's smashing, it's always a counter on, on what she's doing from the rear court. Uh, she just doesn't have the same weapons that, that Rachel has. Mm. Recovery from Rachel there. Go! Hey. Oh, unlucky, unlucky. Right idea. Yeah. She did really do She did really well. Seven. Sophia was early on that uh, front court and that cross net. Yes. I think Rachel did a great job to run that down. To chase that, yeah. Good defense. Very good defense there. Service over. Eight. Ten. They're starting to get up behind those flick serves now, mm. so they're more ready for it. Uh, and you can see once they get the shuttle down, and it. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a shame. Service over. They have to such 11, a good defense. Eleven eight uh, yeah, intervals. But eleven eight. Yeah, much more interesting now. Much closer. Yeah. Well, did we go to the intervals in eleven eight as well last time? Yeah, it was still close at the interval last mm. time. Uh, and okay, then Sophia just pulled away. The girls pulled away. Yeah, uh, but this time then, if they reduce then the distance of returning when they when they get the, the serve, yeah, uh, when they get served, all those flick serves. You can see at, mm. the, at the start of that game they were struggling to get behind it. Rachel then I think it was at six two took a step back. Yes, got them back in the in the twenty play, seconds. And, you know, 20 in the rallies, it's, it's very competitive. It just 
is going to be difficult for Rachel having to go from attack of forehand to round ahead, forehand to round ahead uh, to keep that. 11, that 8, um, but play. she has great energy levels and she's got great power. Again, you see that Paige reads the front court so well. She just needs to get that 12, little bit more confidence eight. at the front court to, yeah. to set up her sister at the, at the back. Good return, yeah. very good hand. You see, Service this is over. Really Nine, yeah. twelve. Because she has that good variations in, 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 in the low turn reserves. Again, left and Service turn over. Thirteen, nine. I think, you know, with Paige there, it's just encouraging her to be patient when she's at the back. Yeah. Don't, you know, she's feeling maybe the out. Need to, to get forward too. Quick. Service over. Ten, uh, you know, thirteen. For wait for the right one to go forward on. Even if you're not heading through them, just make sure that you're that you're heading down. And when you get the opportunity to go forward, then move as opposed to you know, just rushing forward. Service over. Fourteen, ten. Mistake. 15. Good old, a good yeah. old, you know, and she's ready with her racket. She's doing the right things. It's, it's she's just unlucky not to make the the interception on that one. I like the way that Rachel is stepping back a lot more now. Yeah, it's smart. She's really smart in the way Service that she's, over. she's covering those extra shots for, 11, for her sister as well. 15. Yeah. So let's see if she can get into a run of uh, serve intercept. and they're not pushing the flat cross anymore. They're, they're taking the straight uh, line approach. Uh, Sophia thinking singles. a bit too much <laughs> singles. <yeah. laughs> a bit singles. 12-15, still in arm reach. Ooh, maybe a little nerve setting in for 13, uh, 15. Sophia and Kate. You can't get, get too comfortable though. No. Really good call there. That was a that neat call from Kate Frost. Um, uh, really strong forward because she showed speed. 16, yeah. And then at 13. the very last second, you could see then she just changed the cross. Rachel uh, did well to get a racket on it, and then Kate was already for the next one. But the Woods have really picked it up here. They're really starting to play uh, a good game. So Kate and Sophia need to be a little bit careful. to leave it, but Sophia was on shot. Oh, oh, what a shot. shot. Good shot. Get the crowd, uh, 17, get the crowd clapping. 13. Oh, smile from Sophia there after that one. Oh. oh, clever shot. Nice switch again from Sophia on the defense. Get, get Service over. And, uh, 14, 17. Starting to see some really nice rallies now. Yeah, important point now for the Woods. They get this one. Good return to serve. Service over. Sophia has shown a few good, really 14. good um, demi return um, for the last few rallies. Yeah, I think very to the waist. I think the page of the low serves has done a good job and it returns the serve. Um, Service over. If I was. Kate 15, go back to 18. Like you know, using the flicks against mm -hmm. her. Um, but it's been more even now in this second half of this game. Yes. Good to from Rachel. Go. No, no, no! Oh. Service over! Call, guys, and Paige just left 19, it. 15. It happens. Still within reach here, 1915. Go! Ready, move, go! Go! Oh, nice. Really good shot from Kate. She's very clever, Kate, the way she can find those gaps in court. Look at that, great move from her again. Oh, unlucky, Rachel. 
20, so. match, match point, point. 15. Yeah. Kate looking to uh, retain her national title. Sophia looking to take her first ever uh, women's doubles title. Oh, drive sir. <laughs> drive sir. We feel, we see, we've seen the few today. Oh, what a smash. Correction out. Service <laughs> over. 16, okay. 20. That was an out. overrule. Let's see. Oh, I thought it was it. <laughs> Listen, the line judge Cork. has the uh, perfect view of that one. Yes, so, yes, yes. So I guess. Uh, I thought it was overruled, though. I don't know. We'll get to see one more point, or maybe we'll get to see four more points. points. Oh, at, at least two. 17, yeah. another 20. 17, 20. Another match point saved. Yeah. And the girl is really uh, fighting hard here. Yeah. Go! Good defense there yeah. from Rachel. Solid. Yeah. Smart, oh. smart. Yeah. Good player. Yeah. Good point. Oh, fantastic brilliant. point. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely fantastic point there from both from 18, all four ladies. Yeah. And that, that's what Paige is brilliant at. Very uh, good. When people attack on her and she blocks, she can come in and make the kill. Um, Kate and Sophia have been quite clever throughout the match at not attacking at her to let her do that counter at the yeah. Not over. Oh, oh, it's over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic uh, pressing by Kate. Good recovery from Rachel twice yeah, to, yeah. to make her play one more shot. Um, yeah, I think uh, Sophia and Kate got their tactics uh, spot on spot there. Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and control the game. game. Match one by K Frost and Sophia Noble, 21 9, um, 21 uh, 18. You know, very the serves well, but it was a very competitive match. And the Woods really got closer towards the end there. And Brilliant second set. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. You know, there was opportunity for them to sneak that second game, but that sets us up for our last final of the day. Oof. Sam McKay and Jenny King. This is Josh. And Moya. So we'll be back with you soon for the, the final game when they're ready to come on court and we'll see you soon.
Here's the rankings. Uh, currently, we've got Moya Ryan sitting at the, the top of the rankings, uh, along with George McGee as a pair. And uh, in the lower rankings, uh, we have Sam McKay and uh, Jenny King, who both have played very few mixed this year. So, will be on rank going into this, but uh, have proven themselves very well throughout the tournament. Craig McCourtney back on the hot seat with me, and uh, Craig, you, you've been looking forward to this one. Yeah, I have actually. <laughs> um, I was chatting to the guys before they went on court, and um, it's an exciting one. It's great to see um, a friend of mine, Sam, in the final. Um, there's a lot of coaching at the moment um, with the, the, some of the youngsters coming through, so it's great to see him uh, still playing at a really good level. Um, lots of national titles on court here as well. Um, of course, Josh going for two today now, uh, trying to add another one. <coughs> Already with 11 national titles, Josh, and trying to add another one here with the mi in the mixed. Um, so the stats here, Josh McGee 29, Moya Ryan 25, currently uh, ranked three Joshua and Moya's ranking number one. Uh, and again, national titles as a partnership, they have two titles together, Craig. Yeah, this will be, their three in a row, their third in a row actually in the mixed doubles at the nationals. They have, haven't won the last two consecutively, so um, they're going for their third here together as a partnership. Uh, meanwhile, on, on the other side, we've got uh, Sam McKay, 25 years of age, Jenny King, 37 years of age. Jenny, seven women doubles and one women singles title, so she's eight national titles under her belt. Well, Sam McKay, uh, no national titles. He's been in a final or two. I've, uh, I've been in one or two of them alongside him in men's doubles. So he's dumped me, and uh, he's going for a better option uh, in the mixed doubles uh, along with Jenny. So. Uh, Irish ranking, of course, uh, these guys haven't played so many mixed uh, and very few mixed together, so only 13 and 39. Uh, but throughout the tournament, they've proven themselves as a very dangerous mixed partnership. Yeah, of course, Jenny having won national titles in uh, singles. I think she's one of the youngest ever um, people to win a national title. Dan, possibly she was 16 at the time. So uh, a lot of experience with Jenny on court here, one of the more experienced players on court along with Josh. Yeah, absolutely. They've been uh, in many national finals, uh, the two of them, and, and Moya's building up quite a few national titles herself. Uh, Sam will desperately want to get uh, that title on, under his belt. and. Um, you know, he's been in double finals, uh, now a mixed final, but and also we all know Sam is a very good singles player as well. So uh, uh, you would have to say Josh and Moya would be the favourites here, the, the partnership who are Sam on the tour internationally, but uh, Sam and Jenny will definitely be out to try and cause an upset. As you see, getting off to a really good return of serve there, tucking it out wide really early on to the return. there Dan trying to hit hit Moy with the smash but um, force just out wide but Sam is dangerous at the back Dan like it's it's they're gonna have to be a little bit careful. Yeah uh, he wouldn't have uh, played so much mixed uh, he's always focused really on the singles and the, the doubles categories uh, but uh, his singles play complements what he needs to do in mixed you know he covers the rear court so well he's fast uh, he, he's got a good serve good return of serve um, so he's dangerous uh, the way he can mix uh, those strokes, you know, especially uh, on Moya where he can try and, you know, make a move front and punch clear and then he has that big power smash. Um, where he might lack a little bit is just uh, the tactics. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, Josh and Moya cope with having played some long games today already and Jenny and Sam are pretty fresh. They've not played in any of the other finals, so hopefully that might play a factor down a little bit in the, in, in the game. Yeah, of course, and, you know, they've just uh, come back from Thailand as well, so there's maybe still a bit of jet lag there. Uh, so a good opportunity for, for Jenny and Sam to, to try and get stuck in and 
Um, you know, it's been a very even start so far. Um, with Sam working really well across the back of the court and Jenny controlling the front court. Uh, so, 4 3. from Sam after yeah. all the hard work that he had done that uh, Jenny wasn't able to put it away on this occasion. Interesting to see Josh and Mark uh, defending so much to start the game. Maybe yeah. they're just trying to take a little bit of the edge off uh, Sam uh, to start with. Um, but 5-4 lead now for, for Joshua and Maya. And, uh, interesting that they're defending a lot to begin the match. Yeah, Sam tried to be really aggressive off her turn to serve there, and it just kind of came back Six, on him as, as Josh moved him across the court into space. Tried to push body off her turn to serve, which is quite a good return to serve in mixed stand, no? Pushing body. Yeah, um, Josh is very strong on the forearm. He's able to go, you know, back over the top each time. Um, what? Makes Josh and Maya such a dangerous pair. Of course, reaching quarterfinals European Games in 2023 is, you can see Maya's defense is so solid. Uh, she is an extremely comfortable when people are coming at her with pace. And for Sam uh, nice and Jenny, the challenge will be to vary that pace. Because if they play hard and fast, you know, Maya will be able to eat that up. Uh, and equally, she's extremely solid on her serve. Uh, so she has a very good uh, variation on her low serve, varies very well with her flick. So for them to try and uh, neutralize Moya, they need to try and take the pace out, uh, make her change direction, um, because when it's coming hard and fast, that's you know her comfort zone. Yeah, I remember watching that European Championship game as well, and she's just so solid on those hit those really you would say fundamentals that are so important for mixed doubles. Uh, your serve and your first three shots. So, um, and then you're a lot of power behind her with Josh, so difficult to play against. As you see there, pu punch clear. It's been called out. Nice idea by Josh though there, Dan, punch clear cross over Jenny's head to try and get her into the back. Laugh between the I players, of course. Side, okay. Yeah, Jenny touching the shuttle, Nine, and maybe four. the umpire not spotting it initially, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think <laughs> she was prepared to take that one. No. Yeah, Sam, Sam taking a bit of a chance that time. Uh, you called it before, where last time you went for the body and it came back uh, from Josh, so this time he just decided to make a, a softer return. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, just try to get below, get them below level net on the after the returns. Yeah. See, good, oh, good serve from Moya there. You mentioned that earlier. Like it's just nice serve onto the tee, and kind of cut the angle out a little bit around the body. Yeah, it, when Moya's serving like this, it's almost she's got like a small chop motion on her mm. serve, and it's very flat. The difficulty about it is it makes the opponents push up into the mid court. That's where Josh is so strong at the pushes and the, the turns. Mm. Uh, getting a little bit of a look across there from Sam McKay. He seems to be enjoying this one. Uh, but uh, interesting start to the game. For me, Jenny has to challenge Moya at the front. Mm. Sam has to step much higher up in the midcourt because if he gets lured deep and he starts lifting to Josh, Josh is just too dangerous like that. Nice. Follow just like up that. there from Jenny, yeah. um, and th you just mentioned like that's what they're going to have to do here if they if if uh, yeah but just just take Moya out of the net really right yeah that but but it was the mid court there you you seen how early Sam was on the mid court and mm. he maybe has been a little bit deep he has to get up and Jenny as well needs to, to get up and take the the front court yeah. uh, because if you're playing in an upward direction on net to Moya or upward direction on mid court to Josh uh, they're going to be in trouble. 
Yeah. You see there again, Sam early on the on the mid court, then it came across the court, and he was early on the next one as well, as you see there. Yeah. And follow up again, early, 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 and then they're putting them under more pressure then. And I felt it was exactly the same in the semi-final in the first game against Scott and Shifra that uh, Sam was a little bit late on the midcourt and that's why uh, Scott and Shifra I think dominated the start of the game but then when Sam started to take over the midcourt and be more aggressive then the game even died a lot. Yeah I mean of course they had a very close semi-final um, Sam and Jenny earlier this morning winning 22-20 in the third against uh, Scott and Schaefer, which was a really great game as well, Dan, that one. Yeah. Um, and um, Josh and Moya equally having a very tight semi final against David and Kate. 21 uh, 18, 19, 21, 21 18. So two really close semi finals in the lead up to this final. Yeah, Sam so much higher on the court now. You can see that because every so often he's having to push in front of Jen now, and Jen's covering the real court. But uh, they're doing a good job here now in uh, keeping Josh and Moya out of their favourite positions. Yeah. yeah, that's the one that Sam needs to do more often. Oh, good dig out from Josh and Moya. Oh, what a oh, guy. She's put out. That's a great idea. Just put that out the back. Goodbye, uh, Jan, on the net there again, Dan. She took control of the net there to force. Um, to force them into more defensive uh, play. Yeah, uh, and both times she did the right thing, and Moya and Josh did a great job at like scraping it back. But like that, uh, she has to try and be that presence on the front court, uh, making sure that you know she's turning away from Moya, that she's not just uh, playing in front of her. Yeah, just like that. And yeah, Sam's strong, strong enough. Yeah, I mean, uh, he was early, early on the mid court, as you, as you said. So I mean, that was really nice there. Good, yeah. third, good third shot by Jen there as well. Yeah, Sarah looking for the third and just guiding it just away from her, encouraging Sam to come up and step into the midcourt. So oh, she point there because uh, they were just starting to get a rhythm again, but it's 15-9 uh, now, and Josh and Moya looking in control of this opening game. It's a nice so layoff by him down into, 16, into the, down to the service line as well. Yeah, forcing the, the short lift again. That's that serve we talked about. Yeah, I mean, she, she, the way she chops it, the shuttle hasn't straightened out by the time it's come over. Um, it kind of dips down when you chop it like that, the shuttle. Serve, so yeah. you have to be a bit... Because Sa Sam, you know, Sam was fast off the mark there, but even fast off the mark, he couldn't, he couldn't do anything with it. Sometimes it's, you know, better just to play in the court to make it safe. Josh, are confident enough to to lift it. He's, uh, you know, he's assured of Moel is able to take the attack. Yeah, good change of pace from Jan. And yeah, Sam going for the angle this time. Uh, nice flow from Jenny to set Sam up there. For me, th this is th this is the decisions that he, he should be making because if he goes power there, Moya, she steps in and she hits the back box. This time she has to move a little bit, uh, and that's a more uh, you know a more sensible approach from Sam. Clever by Josh. Oh, great rally again. This oh, is where Sam has to be clever, using his angles, playing over the top rather than, you know, uh, using the power all the time. Yeah, that was a, a nice one over Moy's head then. Yeah. You can see the idea that, that Nice idea there. there, Dan, I think, with the flick, flicker, keep her, keep her in that back area to try and create the space. But needed to change direction there. Yes. Ah, that's nice by Moya. Again, Sam, just a little bit impatient, going for the power cross, and that's what we talk about. If you give Poya, uh, Moya the, the power, she just eat that up, and she's so good in those flat exchanges. 
Yeah, he's got good racket control and it's coming fast onto a down and mid court so to front court. 13, 20. So here we go, game point number two. Good flick by Sam. 14, 20. Starting to get the, the tactics right now. Um, be interesting to see what Joshua and Moya do to neutralize that at the start of the next game. Yeah, yeah that's where he's dangerous. So. 15, this is the, the style that they need to play if they're going to have a chance. Um, be interesting to see if they can continue with that and, and continue to find these gaps on the court. Oh, great turn by Sam again. Again. You see Moya can control that power, but the yeah, angle. Really good. good change of pace there by Sam. 16, 20. Yeah, like, but like it was single slices. Uh, when he uses those, he's got good angle. Mm, those cuts and reverses, he's, he hits really nice from all of his singles down, I suppose. Oh, solid by Jan, very aggressive coming forward. Oh, oh. Good. <laughs> Good fight there, though, at the end for from Jenny and Sam. Um, What's game one by? As they lose that first one, 21-16. Joshua Maggi and Moya Rian, 21-16. They can keep that tactic down, I think, going into this next game. They'll have a good chance to put them under pressure again. Yeah, so once we saw Sam, you know, varying his attack with the slices and, uh, you know, he got a lovely punch clear against Moya where he, he found the gap that way. Um, they got into the game uh, when they were using the raw power all the time. Even, you know, when he was using the raw power of return of serve and Josh was going over the, the top of him, they struggled then. So Jenny had to try and again be first on the net, uh, find the gap away from Moya and Sam has to be early in the midcourt. Uh, on the flip side, uh, Moya has to continue to be solid on her serve. Uh, look to, you know, push that one just past uh, Jen. Uh, when Sam's lifting to Josh, generally Josh and Moya are winning those points. So mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's an interesting matchup to see who, c who can win the front court, who can win the midcourt, and, and that's what's going to be the difference here, I feel. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Josh and Moya Dan will be playing a few international tournaments together now, I presume. I know some of the guys are going to Azerbaijan International now soon, so um, will the guys be going to that one? or? Yeah, they're due to go uh, next week, so... Um, Ready to play? Let's see uh, how they get on here, and uh, hopefully they can uh, be prepared for, for next week also. A lot of travel for them at the minute. Yeah. He sounds back to that tactic of changing his pace on the shot. Jenny's really high up the front court, so they're looking to do the right things. Oh, yeah, it's just a miss hit there from Sam. He was early on it, though. Yeah. Simple block there from uh, Moya, and again she just uh, controls that straight block so well to take the net. Good length on the list. Three love lead. Very good by Moya. Uh, I think again oh. it's all set up from that the quality of the serve where she's forcing her opponents to push up uh, and then she's looking for that third shot. Oh well done Sam. Nice pushing. Good hands there. Yeah. Change direction. One, four. Yeah, and, and his first three returns, uh, first two returns, he went for the the, the tuck softer returns that time, he just put a bit of pace on it as well. Nice block. Yeah, good from Jenny. That time really ready with the racket, again Two, getting it below tape. Four. And Sam really strong on the midcourt again. Another good block. That's good. Oh, 
great rally. That's clever by Josh there, yeah. isn't it, Dan? It's a cross court butch clear over Jenny's head. She wasn't really expecting it either. Um, just last minute punched over and created the winner for Moy at the net, and that was a really nice mixed up with them. Yeah, he had three opportunities to hit the full smash, but he decided to play slices and then over the top. So he's very in his play very well. I think in the men's doubles he did a good job with that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point Adam and uh, David were feeding off the pace of the power and then he just started to vary his, uh, his downward attack. Six, two. So four point lead here and uh, just giving Josh and Moya a bit of breathing room uh, on the game. Clever return from Sam again. Oi. Moya again just finding two. that uh, no, no yeah, man's she's land. So, she's so good at that, isn't she? Just finding that, that like, little tuck or little gap or a uh, little control block. Um, mm. It's really one of the strong points of her, her mixed up with that, isn't it? They have a nice lead here now. 7 2. Joshua. Yeah. No. Oh. Full 360 from Sam there. Mm -hmm. Tried that tuck return a serve out to the side again, but they were well ready for it that time. Yeah, I think uh, it it hasn't worked as well uh, as when he was going for the the drive onto the body or into the long corner because he's getting trapped a little bit at the front and he's not being able to get behind the shuttle to attack. Yeah, and uh, just they're just giving control of the rally away pretty quickly then, aren't they? He's in. Called out. Sorry, so long. Three, nine. Three, nine. So 10-3, and uh, it's a positive display so far from Josh and Moya in this second game. Moya committing to that front court. And yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been impressed, Dan, with Moya and Josh. I mean, they've had two matches already, fine, two finals today, final each day already, so, you know, and they're, and they're still looking really quite sharp. I mean, um, it just shows all the... The amount of international tournaments the two of them are playing at the moment is really standing up to them here in this match. Yeah, well, final for Josh and semi-final for, for Moya earlier. Um, and it was a long semi-final that Moya was in. Um, Josh was uh, a little bit tired uh, earlier in the day uh, in his final, final match where he looked a little bit low in energy, but then seemed to get it back again. Um, but I know they're, they're both still... Uh, Suffering a little bit from the, the travel from Thailand, but um, all the players came back from there recently, didn't they? Yeah, it, it was uh, all of the carded athletes were, were away competing in that, uh, another Olympic qualification event, but they've done well and uh, they've uh, managed to, you know, keep that energy level throughout the, the weekend. Um, so I'm sure they'll, they'll be looking for a well-earned rest after this. Jenny. Oh. 13, 4. Come on! It's a big lead they have now done. Sam and Jenny are going to just need to go for it now, really. Yeah, well, the good thing about b there's the returns, I think Sam should have used more off because uh, he did that well in the opening game. A mm. uh, little bit running out of ideas at this point, but sometimes when you're this far down, then you can just play free. Um, but at the minute, Josh four. and Moya are just being rock solid in, in both their areas. Yeah, I mean, their first three shots down are really good. Yours, come on. That's good defense from Moya then. Come on! Come on! Sorry, sorry. 
now. Moy was defending really well there, though, Dan, up until then. But Yeah, and, um, and even the, the one she missed on it was the right thing to step in, but Jenny got good angle on the smash. Mm. Josh using that punch clear again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so it was a good switch from Moy there, Dan. Yeah. He should get Sam into that corner. He had his running shoes on there, and I think he was delighted to see that one go long. So a few points closer. Service over. 16, 6. So here we can get a lovely angle of uh, Moya Seven. See how tight that one is to the net. She's been so good throughout the tournament at yeah. finding that uh, <laughs> right smile there from Sam as he puts this smash out the side of the court. Yeah. Good variation from Josh at the back again. They've done such a good job in the second game of keeping the shuttle below tape level, level and that's where Jenny and Sam have struggled to, you know, find the gaps uh, across the court on them because Moya's really high up the court and Josh is right behind her. Short. Oh, a great angle again. Yeah, that's nice, just guiding it down below, below the net there from Moya. So good at that. Yeah, it's the reverse, and then followed by Moya just early on the tape. She's done that really well throughout this tournament. Yeah. Dundee, well, match point. Six. Match point. And another national title for Josh today. Oh. <laughs> Of the shot from Sam McKay. Not over yet. Oh, good power from Josh. And there it is. Okay. That's it. It's another title for Josh and another title for Moya. Um, Sam McKay has to wait a little bit longer before uh, he gets his uh, first national title, but uh, they've done a great job reaching the final here today. Uh, Moya and Josh looked really good there uh, throughout, throughout the tournament, uh, done a great job Thank and you. they'll soon be back on their plane to Azerbaijan, um, so an exciting uh, few months ahead for, for those guys in the lead up to the European Championships and uh, uh, Jenny and Sam will feature in a lot of the domestic events coming up as well and, uh, and the BPL. Yeah. So looking back over uh, today's finals, uh, so the winners of the lady singles, Sophia Noble uh, coming out on top over Shifa Flynn. Josh McGee, Paul Reynolds uh, retaining their men's doubles title uh, in a repeat of last year's final with uh, Adam Callister and David Walsh. Nat in the win, looking dominant at Gia, then there's men's singles, adding a seventh singles title uh, against Jonathan Dome. Kate Frost back again, taking a women's doubles title with Sophia, who took her second title of the day. Uh, in a good match up against the Wood Sisters, Paige and Rachel. And in our last final of the day, Josh and McGee and Moya Ryan uh, wrapping up the day with uh, another third uh, national title in a row, uh, beating Sam McKay and Jenny King. Thanks everyone for tuning in to our 2024 nationals. Uh, we'll be going on now to the presentations. Uh, but thank you all for, for all your uh, tuning in and uh, following us. And we've had record numbers here uh, on the stream and delighted to, to have you guys at home watching along with us. So thanks again, and we'll be seeing you soon for upcoming events like the, the graded uh, events uh, and the Victor Masters Nationals next week. Uh, we'll be featuring some of our over 35 uh, plus players. Uh, that's held in Baldoil Banton Centre. Uh, so make sure to tune in to see some of our more experienced players playing. Uh, we won't say older players, we'll say more experienced players. So uh, hopefully see you tuned in then. Thanks a million, Craig, and thanks again to Phil McKeown for his wonderful streaming. Uh, and we'll see you again soon.